Hello there fools, I am so hecking excited, also out of breath, holy heck, I just ran upstairs and now I'm really really tired, because I was getting some snacks just in case, because later I'm probably going to need them, my throat's probably going to be absolutely but later, but oh my goodness, I am actually so excited, uh, we are, I'm, I'm going to try my very very best to... Oh my god, one second, let me catch my breath. I'm gonna try my very best to um, to finish Rise From The Ashes today, and I really think we can. My throat feels good. Um, it's quite early, it's uh, almost 9.30 now. 9.23, but um, yeah, which isn't like early early, but it's like just getting dark out, which is why, what I mean by early. Uh, I'm I'm really really excited. So let's let's jump in. I'm pretty sure the audio is good. I did mess with it, but I'm pretty sure it's back to normal. So shouldn't have any issues with the audio. But if there are issues, that is why. That's why I'm having it. I was like, I swear that it's louder than usual. It's because I can have it turn up to 34. <laughs> I used to always have my audio at 100, but then more recently I've turned it down to like 24 as my standard. Uh, I'm pretty certain I'm not forgetting anything. I feel like I am. I feel like I'm always forgetting something at the beginning of streams. But yeah, let's just let's just get started. I'm so excited. So there's an investigation and two trial parts left, I'm assuming. Uh so I think definitely doable. Because that's that's how much we did for the first stream, and that was How long was that? Let me check quickly. That first stream was about 4 hours 15 minutes. I feel like these parts are going to be a bit longer because it's, um, you know, the end of the game. But yeah, also, I do want to say, when I was streaming DGS, uh, I finished the first game 10 days before my birthday, and then I started the next game, actually no, I think it was 11 days before my birthday, because I streamed The Greatest Attorney 2, I started streaming that one day after my birthday. It is coming back up on my birthday and I'm not going to do that again. No matter how tempting it is, I'm not going to do it again. Even though it's very, very tempting to do the exact same thing that I did for DGS, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave a bit more of a gap in between these, but... I mean, unless... M m maybe I'll get desperate because I really, really enjoy S Attorney. <clears throat> but yeah, let's get started. I'm so excited. Hi, Emma. I was almost expecting to see Maya. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry, Mr. Wright. I'm sorry for what my sister said. Getting flashbacks. This time I'll actually allow it because it's been a while since last stream. Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. No, Lana. Don't say that. I... didn't know. I never knew that the SL9 incident was just another name for... The Joe Dark killings. Sounds like everyone's heard about these killings but me. Lana wanted Dark convicted so badly. That's why she used me. That's why she used what happened to me. What do you mean, what happened to you? It's all there in the file. Joe Dark's last victim was Prosecutor Neil Marshall. When he murdered Officer Marshall's brother, he left behind an incriminating, an incriminating piece of evidence. But what did you have to do with those killings, Emma? She was a witness, you dumbass. We read it, even I remember, and it was four days ago. On the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall... N Neil... I'm fucking up my words, Mr. Wright. <laughs> on, on the night Prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered, Joe Dark tried to kill me. Oh my god, okay. That's a lot more than... Wait, oh, oh golly, that, that's a lot more than I thought. Oh golly. Also, a little, little toad. Bup man, bup man. Love him, love him. <laughs> what? He tried to kill you? Oh my goodness. Oh golly. Officer Marshall's brother, Neil, was only trying to save me. So that means you. Yes. I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. Fuck. Whoa. Really? 
Really? Oh my god. Who could have foreseen this? Who could have foreseen this plot twist? Oh my goodness. Emma Sky was a witness in the Joe Dark Killings trial? That's crazy. <laughs> I thought it was the fourth page. <laughs> I was a witness in the Joe Dark trial. I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Oh gee. <laughs> oh golly, who could have foreseen this? <laughs> Oh, that's so dumb. Phoenix, you are a dumbass. Also, it is so hot, by the way. I forgot to mention this. I don't think I mentioned it in the intro. I meant to mention it in the intro. It is so hot recently. I hate summer so much. Oh my goodness. So, I might also have to step out at some point if it gets too hot. But, oh my fucking god, Phoenix. You are a dumbass. I didn't see that one coming. Oh, gee. Emma, I'm a defense attorney. How do you feel about that? See this? It's my attorney's badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. Yes, you have. You're the first one who's actually been interested. Well, okay. Now I'm sad. Hey, Emma. I saw my incident. It happened two years ago. It was right about this time of the year, too. There was a terrible thunderstorm that day. Unusual for the season. I was alone in my sister's office. We were planning to eat dinner together when she finished her work. Then suddenly, this terrifying man came bursting into the office. Joe Dark. It seemed like he was running from someone. He pulled out a knife and screamed at me. Oh, my headphones. Uh-oh. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, Prosecutor Marshall showed up. Jake Marshall's brother. Joe Dark tried to take me hostage. But before he could, Mr. Marshall tackled him. Then... What happened? Ah, uh, I'll never forget it. Lightning struck, and the lights went out. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning flashed outside the window, lighting up the office for an instant. What I saw then burned a permanent picture in my mind. I... I can still see it now. A permanent picture? After the incident. I don't remember the moment when Dark stabbed Mr. Marshall. So you weren't able to testify about that? No, I was only asked about when I was attacked. That must be why Lana... Why she made up the crime. Made it up? You mean, provided bogus evidence? I don't know why the word bogus in this situation is so funny. That's bogus. <laughs> that was bogus. It's like... This is a traumatizing event in my life. Please stop using the word bogus. The prosecutor's office wanted that guilty verdict so badly. Lana forged the evidence, and Mr. Edgeworth used it. Edgeworth? Well, he already said it in the... Phoenix, you're a dumbass. This happened four days ago, and I remember. that For you, it happened one day ago. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, Edgeworth was like, oh my god, what? Lana, you, you you gave me false evidence? Oh my goodness, this is terrible. Phoenix is like, whoa, wait, really? Edgeworth used forged evidence? Yes, but I'm sure he didn't know anything about it. He couldn't have known he was being given false evidence. Even so, that's when it all started. The rumors about Mr. Edgeworth, I mean. It's all my fault. If I could have just testified properly, none of this would have happened. So it's true even though he may not have known it. Edgeworth really was involved in falsifying evidence. After that case ended, Lana was never the same. She became cold, like she is today. She must not have been able to face up to what she did, especially not to Emma. Permanent picture, let's talk about your trauma a bit more. What did you see in the instant that crime occurred? Oh goodness. Oh golly. Dark knocked down Mr. Marshall and raised his knife. Neil Marshall was stabbed right in front of this poor girl. I don't remember what happened after that. Apparently I passed out. Oh No! When I came to, Lana was cradling me in her arms. Poor Emma. 
You've been through so much. Baby. No. No. Bug sprite check. Ah, I couldn't bring myself to testify about that instant. I tried, but the words just wouldn't come out. I drew a picture, but it wasn't any good. Two years ago, you must have been 14. That's understandable. Aww. Oh my god. <laughs> I I just looked over to my to my other monitor, and it has like Twitch open, obviously, for like the chat. And I, I saw someone in my follow channels playing a game called Planet of Lana. <laughs> that, was, that was crazy. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, wait. <laughs> That's her. Once it was all over, I made up my mind. I decided that when I grew up, I'd become a scientific investigator. I want to be able to fight crime with my testimonies. And find the evidence to make an airtight case. That way, Lana would never have to forge any. Have to forge any. I see. I think I'm finally starting to understand what makes Emma, t Emma tick. <laughs> That's a weird way to put it, but okay. But there's still something that bothers me about that crime. Something puzzling. Hello, Sholmes. There's something that's puzzling me, Emma. What is it? You said you were in Ilana's office at that time, right? That's right. Why then would a serial killer come running in there? That's a good point, holy heck. Not only that, but he was being chased by a prosecutor. Oh, there's no mystery there. Was he already, like, a suspect? Joe Dark had been taken in, taken in for questioning that day. Taken in for questioning? You mean, by the police? No, Phoenix, by the fucking... Doctors, what do you think, dumbass? Of course, this happened at the police department. He tried to run away halfway through the interview and fled into my sister's office. But why did he run all the way over to your sister's office? Because the detective offices in the questioning room are right across from the elevator. Across from the elevator? But Lana was the chief prosecutor, wasn't she? No, silly. Didn't I tell you? Two years ago, Lana was a detective. She was the best in the entire force. What? That's news to me. Well, you could have picked it up from context, Phoenix. Dumbass. Fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking, fucking idiot. Dumbass. After the Joe Dark case, she was transferred to the prosecutor's office and made chief prosecutor. Lana used to be a detective. I'd better have another talk with her. Alright, let's go see Lana then. Ah, <sighs> it's so difficult to breathe. Give me a second. I'm not going to say what I'm doing because... None of your business, but I'm taking something off. <laughs> oh, that should be better, hopefully. <sighs> Detention center. Hi, Lana. Hello, Lana. I almost did that in Phoenix's voice. You might have heard like a little like breath that was a lot deeper. I was, I was like getting so ready to go, Lana. <laughs> Lana. Mr. Wright, it seems I keep causing you trouble. Falsifying evidence. I didn't think you were the type. Criminals don't mind playing foul. Why should we? Jesus, Lana, you suck. Well, Lana, if you're wrong, an innocent person might be found guilty. I mean, she's not gonna care because. She's not gonna care, she knew that Joe Dark was guilty, and therefore it was good because she did it that one time and so it couldn't go badly. So it doesn't matter because it went well the one time, so why should she care if it was risky? Oh, never mind, she actually... never mind. Believe me, I understand the risks. Lana. Emma told me about you. Oh? About how you were a detective two years ago. And how the SL9 incident was the reason for your transfer to the prosecutor's office. That's right. Could you fill me in on the details, especially about that unusually unusual change of jobs? I suppose you have a right to know, Mr. Wright. Heh, <laughs> get it? Your name is Wright, and I said the word right. It's a funny joke that the developers of this game made. 
Do you know what an Ace Attorney pun name is, Mr. Wright? Lana, I'm a, I'm a defense attorney. I'm a said prosecutor. Attorneys and prosecutors have no business showing evidence outside court. Well, okay. <laughs> It's tab. You're not. You're, you're the defendant. What do you mean? <laughs> it's taboo, especially when the interests of both parties are involved. She really means it. I, you're the. You're the defendant, Lana. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk. <laughs> Today's trial. A lot of revelations were uncovered at the trial today. Not the least of which was the fact that this case is largely connected to another one two years ago. Evidence from that case was stolen as well, though I expected as much. I know how obsessive Officer Marshall can be. That trial... it really wasn't fair, was it? I believed in you, Lana. I believed that no matter what happened, you'd always stick to the truth. It couldn't be helped, Emma. At that trial two years ago, I sold my soul. Well, all drama aside, I was about to say, okay, dramatic. All drama aside, the fact of the matter is, at 5.15, there was no murder at the police department. Tell me it's not true, Lana. What the witness, Miss Star, said. I bought you stabbing Mr. Goodman with a knife. Lana, I don't understand. Why won't you tell us? Emma. This doesn't involve just me. I don't think I've ever seen Lana look so phased before. Ah. I am yawning, but I swear that I'm not tired. If I was, I wouldn't be streaming this right now. I already fell asleep from like... I don't know, like 12pm to 7pm. So I, I'm not tired. I'm just yawning. I don't know why. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's true. I was a member of the police force two years ago. I, I love how sometimes when it's fading out, they start talking again. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's so funny. She was amazing. Oh, oh, ooh, <laughs> ooh. They still talk about all the cases. Sh oh, they still talk about all the cases she and Chief Gant tracked together. Chief Gant. He was the deputy chief of police back then, but he still worked the crime scenes. Damon Gant. He was everything I aspired to be. They were the best team ever. They solved crimes before the reports could even be filed. Emma really idolizes her big sister. But now you're chief prosecutor. What happened? I always planned on becoming prosecutor. The reason I became a detective was also I missed the A. <laughs> to gain experience investigating crime scenes, so you could use that experience in court, right? Gant's help in the SL9 case was crucial to its resolution. After that, he became chief of police, and arranged my transfer to the prosecutor's office. Maybe I should ask more about the, this investigation of theirs two years ago. Dark Investigation Two years ago, I was second in command of the detectives investigating Dark. Second in command? That means the investigation lead was Dam Damon Gant, right? Yes, Deputy Chief Gant and I shared the same office, and the same investigations. Damn. Even at the same office? We led a team of the best detectives on the force. Here they are! Detective Goodman, whose case it was, Jake Marshall, and Angel Starr. It was the first time Marshall worked with his brother. He was quite gung-ho. Without a doubt, Joe Dark was the serial killer. We asked him to come in for questioning. We were desperate for evidence. That was when his final murder took place. When he tried to murder Emma. <sighs> Prosecutor Marshall was trying to save me from Dark. You see, the first person who happened upon the scene of the crime was me. Oh, she falsified evidence when she got to the crime scene. Ooh, Elana. Naughty. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. Naughty was not the words I was expecting, though. Now you tell us. First one, it seemed. 
Damon Gantz and Neil Marshall were the ones questioning Dark that day. The investigation was in its final stages, and Dark must have suddenly panicked. So we waited until Gantz and Marshall let their guards down, then fled the room. From there, he ran straight to the office shared by Defu Deputy Chief Gantz and myself. Why? That's where he found me! So, you were the first person to run, a run to the scene, Lana. It appears so. I was filing some papers while Gantz and Marshall were questioning Dark. Oh my golly goodness. When I returned to my office, I saw three bodies on the floor and smelled blood. Three bodies? I wonder who the third one could be. Uh, yeah, he says. Prosecutor Marshall, the victim. Emma, who had passed out. And the suspect, Joe Dark. During the struggle, it seems Mr. Marshall struck a final blow before he died. Joe Dark had incurred a minor con concussion and lay unconscious. What did you do? To be honest, I panicked. Oh. I picked up Emma, carried her out of the room, and just held her. Can't blame her. After all, her sister must have gone through. After that, I placed Dark under immediate arrest. Let me get this straight, even though none of us here are. You were all involved in the SL9 incident. That's right. Quite a coincidence, hmm? I don't buy it. Well, what are you saying? There's no way. There's no way everyone involved in this trial was also involved in that incident. Just by chance. For a second, without that second sentence, I was about to say, "What are you saying, Phoenix?" Actually, Jake Marshall wasn't even in that investigation. He just appeared today. And you're trying to say that he was part of that investigation? I don't believe it. But that case was solved two years ago. At least one person went to extremes because they didn't believe it was truly solved. That is true. Officer Marshall. Yes, his actions came as a surprise to me as well. Ever since his brother died, he's changed completely. He all of a sudden became very obsessed with Texas. I don't know why. I guess he wasn't convinced with the ruling against Joe Dark. Life doesn't end with the closing of a case. Everyone has to live the rest of their lives with their memories. That case just might not be over yet. Huh? Emma was assaulted by Dark at the police department, right? Yes, in the office that Damon Gant and I shared. The office that Mr. Gant now occupies by himself. The Chief's office. Can we go there? To the scene of the crime. Maybe we should have a look at the Chief's office. The site of the final SL9 murder. Heck yeah! Is that it? <laughs> that was quite sudden. Is that... I can't think of anything I could present her. Well, I guess, let's go. Can I go there somehow? I guess when it probably it would be in the police department, wouldn't it? Ooh. Hey, Bolt. Oh, no, it's a bit Marshall. I'd have expected he would have been arrested for, like, you know, assaulting Meekins, also lying in his testimony is one thing, but I don't think anyone in this attorney cares about that anymore. You know, perjury. Perjury, I hardly know, you know. But, like, you know, all, all, the, all the bad stuff that he did. Uh, how was he not in jail? Howdy, Bambina. I was not expecting to speak to him today, but I'm glad. Oh, Mr. Marshall. I never thought things would turn out this way when I woke up this morning. Cause sera, sera, they never know where life will lead ya, eh Bambina? I should've known my luck had run out when old Billy dried, dried up this morning. A plan or something? Billy? It must be his pet cactus. <laughs> yeah, it would be a cactus, yeah. Say, where are you headed? Just over to the prosecutor's office for a little interrogation. It's a voluntary appearance, but we all know I won't be coming back. Alright, so he is being arrested. That makes sense. That's sad. Hurry up, my boy. He did nothing wrong. Sorry, but you can't go in the evidence room today, partner. But, Mr. Marshall... Why did you do it? I think that's pretty obvious. Why do prospectors head west? If ever there was a case I needed to know the truth about, it was that one. 
before you turn yourself in, Mr. Marshall, would you mind telling us exactly what happened? Hm. <laughs> Looks like I won't be getting a steak lunch today. Oh, wait, have we ever presented? I assume that I have, but... Mr. Marshall, could you please have a look at this? Sorry, Bambina. I'm not a patrolman anymore, and I'm certainly not a detective. I'm nothing more than a wanted man now. These old as a man have seen too much as it is. Fair enough, but that is just my attorney's badge. Someone was fishy about that trial from the beginning. It wasn't just me, either. All the detectives thought so. What do you mean, fishy? Some of the facts reported were inconsistent with the evidence we found. For example, the murder weapon. The murder weapon? You mean, that switchblade knife with the broken tip? That was Joe Dark's, alright. But, in the initial autopsy report, a question was raised. A question? The blade of the knife was not a perfect match with the wound the victim sustained. What does that mean? It means there's a good chance that knife was not the murder weapon. Ugh! However, in the report that was finally submitted, that possibility had been erased. Could the facts have been concealed with forged evidence? That case left behind scars on all of us. The scars that the SL9 incident left behind. I got the looks, but he got the brains. He was one of the best prosecutors around. Oh my god, he actually said prosecutors. That's how you know that he's serious. I just made detective when it went down. It was our first case together. How old was he? Your brother. He was 27 at the time. He was awarded the highest honor that very day. The highest honor? I wonder what that could be, even though he said it last time. You mean the... King of Prosecutors. I knew it, because he told us. <laughs> yesterday, in the court. Actually, that would have been today, the Phoenix, wouldn't it? He told us earlier today. Crazy. I knew it. What are you looking at me like that for? That's an honor for a prosecutor. Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. Also, ever saw a slight nitpick? Doesn't it say the names of all the prosecutors who have been awarded this on the bottom? I wonder- oh wait, can we examine it and it says something about that? Hey, check it out! There's a metal plate here! Hmm, looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow, one guy's listed a bunch of times, one karma! Yep, must have been amazing. No, because I was about to say, wouldn't his name also be here, Neil Marshall? Like, you'd think that they'd notice the, the Marshall, but... Mr. Marshall must have really been close with his brother. The day the SL9 incident took place, that wasn't the same day as... That's right. It was the day of the evidence transferal. Interesting. It was drizzling that morning, and by nightfall there was thunder. I can't believe two years have gone by already. I tried to steal the evidence to, so the case wouldn't die. Apparently someone tried to stop you. Detective Goodman was murdered, and the evidence locker was empty. <sighs> I hate the way that I yawn, by the way, can I just say? Boss? Whenever I hear it back, I'm always like, oh, shut up. <laughs> I don't know why. There was something going on behind the scenes in that case. We all knew that later. Every detective involved in that investigation, save one, was taken care of. Bruce Goodman? He was still... Ms. Star was fired, and I was demoted and boxed away in a tiny room. What about Detective Goodman? If they did something to him too, the commissioners would get suspicious. And no, they were careful enough not to be too obvious. They? Who are you talking about? Don't get upset, Bambina. But I'm about to spew some very anti-Semitic bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean Damon Gant and Lana Sky. 
Ganton Sky. The investigation lead, Damon Gant, and his second in command, Lana Sky. They look so cool, by the way. I love them. Oh my god. There wasn't a person on the force who hadn't heard of that duo. That case was the biggest step in both of their careers. After the case ended, Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office, right? Yeah, Damon Gan, the new chief of police, arranged for that to happen. She's never been the same since she left. Huh? Everyone who knew her said so. Chief Prosecutor Scout was totally different when she was a detective. Now that he mentions it, Hema said something like that too. Tell me, what happened to my sister? Sorry, Bambina, but her secret's too well guarded. I never found out. Lana's secret? It all started two years ago. So there you have it. That's my story. Did you enjoy it, partner? It was certainly... enlightening. There's one thing for sure I found out in court today. That boy Edgeworth isn't my enemy. He was the one who used falsified evidence to get a guilty verdict. I'm staring deeply! But someone else was the one who gave him that evidence and planned everything. That someone is Damon Gant. Don't believe me? Well, I don't blame you. I won't even be a patrolman after today. Too bad I won't be around to work with you. When you become a real scientific investigator. Adios, Bambina. Aww, I love him. Oh, that's the last time we're ever gonna see him. Wait, what the fuck? We can't go to- unless it's here. Maybe it's here. That's sad though. I wish he came back. He probably would have like different designs since he wouldn't be a patrolman, but still. I wish he came back. I love Marshall, he's awesome. This place is always pretty empty, but today it's deserted. Except for the two people who are always here. That must mean everyone's busy solving crimes. Oh, if you're looking for the others, they're all in the uh, in the conference room. Uh, thanks. Wow, he actually talked to us. With the chief prosecutor saying what she did, and the decision about what to do, about Mr. Edgeworth, not to mention our statement to the media, and tomorrow's trial. There is more chaos going on than Thanksgiving and Christmas put together. I think festive is the word usually used for those. Um, sir, we'd like to have a look around Chief Gant's office. Just use the connecting hallway to the other building, and take the elevator to the top floor. Oh, really? You mean, it's okay for us to go in there? I mean, we aren't police officers or anything. Hey, you're right! You can't go in there! It's off-limits! Now I see where Detective Gumshoe gets his unique charm. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Chief's office. Da -da, da -da -da. Chief's office. Ooh, I'm excited. Oh my goodness, that is a big organ, my dear fellow. Holy heck. Is that what that's called? I'm pretty sure that's what that's called, right? Organ? Ooh, that's that, uh... That's that picture that we saw last time. Whoa, where am I? In the chief's office, silly. At least, that's what I said on the door. Check out that pipe organ. That's real, isn't it? This looks like it would be Van Zeke's office. <laughs> with the massive organ. That's real, isn't it? Hey, I used to take organ lessons in kindergarten. Kindergarten? Isn't that like nursery for Americans? That's... holy heck. They used to call me Little Miss Back. I don't know how old that would be, but that's really young, isn't it? I thought I was a genius until they tried teaching me notes. Oh my goodness. I never could remember where C was. Oh, here he is! Hmm? Oh, here he is! 
Oh my god, even that knight looks like he'll be in Van Zeke's office. Um, I can't quite remember. Let me drink some water real quick. My nose is also really stuffy again. This has happened the last few streams. It goes away at like about an hour or hour and a half in, but it's really annoying. Oh, it's you two. Chief Gant. He put that paper he was reading in this desk. Well, that's going to be important then. So, Arato, have you been swimming lately? Uh, no, I haven't. I've been kind of busy lately. I can appreciate that. I've had my hands full too with Mr. Marshall's misconduct. And Lana's provocative statement. Provocative statement? Oh, you mean about the forged evidence. I was about to say, Phoenix, please. I know that you're a dumbass, but how have you forgotten everything that happened? Like, come on. The trial was today. <laughs> Two years have passed since that incident. My, how time flies! See that big picture on the wall over there? Oh, that's that urn! I guess that was evident, so that makes sense that it's in here. That's cool. That's a picture of Lana, Neil, and me! So, this is Mr. Marshall's brother, Prosecutor Neil Marshall. We took it to commemorate our work together. Something's not right with this picture. I can't quite seem to put my finger on it, though. Is it the vase? Is it because it's not cracked? Is that it, Phoenix? Or is it like... I'm pretty certain it's the same vase, right? Oh, it's also bloody. Yeah, it looks more like polished here, but that is the same. Same there. But at the award ceremony of Gant, Lana, and Neil. Dun, 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 dun. Hi. I think it's supposed to have these really, really long pauses, but it's just so awkward. I don't understand. It's so. I. It, it baffles me. You baffle me, my dear fellow. Anyway, I'd like to reminisce all day, but there are matters that need my attention, such as my hair. It's so long, oh my goodness, I tug and I pull. I'm going to lock up here, so let's get out together. Go out together. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I think he's hitting on you. But this office, it was a crime scene two years ago, wasn't it? That case has long since been over. There's no need to investigate it anymore. All the same, we'd still like to have a look around. Perhaps you didn't hear me. I said there's no need to investigate it anymore. Ugh. Now hurry up and get out. I have a meeting to attend. I Can he fade out? Heck, because I was about to say, that's the same night that's in the photo. I wonder if that's different. Looks like we're in welcome. It seems that case isn't over with yet, after all. What do you mean? Chief Ganton had a request to search the crime scene. That means there must be a reason he doesn't want us looking around in there. You mean, like, a clue? There's gotta be a way we can get inside the Chief's office. Hmm. Maybe... Oh, it is just back here. Hey, Paul! Oh, here he is. Uh, hey, Paul. Detective Gumshoe, aren't you supposed to be in a meeting? I'm, uh, just taking a breather. My feet hurt. From sitting so long? Actually, from serving everyone coffee. Damn, they're doing Gumshoe dirty. Sounds like Detective Gumshoe is still out of the loop. Say, have either of you seen Mr. Edgeworth? Edgeworth? No. Why do you ask? He's under fire from both the police department and the prosecutor's office. It's almost like the battle's between you two in court. That sounds serious. Is it because of what my sister said? That's basically what it all boils down to. That falsified evidence two years ago. Now Mr. Edgeworth has the whole world after his blood. Yikes. 
Let's have a little chat, Edgeworth Crisis. But why would Edgeworth be blamed? It's not like he knew the evidence was forged. Lana Sky's the guilty party here, isn't she? Regardless, a prosecutor is responsible for the evidence they present in court. Not only that... But as you know, there have been a lot of rumors going around about Mr. Edgeworth. His amazing talent as a prosecutor has kept him safe from those who, didn't, who don't like him. But now with this... Are there really so many people who hate him? In our world, only those with talent rise to the top. And Mr. Edgeworth not only has that, but he's young. There's no better recipe I know of for making enemies. Hey, Dick! Keep up the good work! Yes, sir. Let's go out for lunch again sometime. My treat! Yes, sir. You gotta take me back to that joint sometime, okay, Dick? Yes, sir. Damn, I think he's hitting on you. It seems you don't have any problem with enemies. Yeah, well, I'm careful not to stick out. Anyway, I'm a bit worried about him. Under all this pressure, I'm afraid Mr. Retro just might crack. Well, let's not discuss that anymore. <laughs> Actually, I took a look at the file earlier, while the coffee was brewing. He seems genuinely concerned for Edgeworth. Well, did you find out anything? The only evidence Stark left behind was during his final attack. His final attack? You mean... When he killed Prosecutor Marshall, who was trying to protect some girl. Some girl, you know, I looked through the evidence, but uh, it, it was it was some girl, I, I, I don't know, man. It, 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 it was some, it was, it was, it was a kid or something, I, I, don't, I don't really know. Me. It seems that Detective Gumshi never realized Emma was the girl, even though it says her name. So, I, I don't know how. That's when he left the most incriminating evidence of all. Well, what was it? Oh, um, let's see. I think it had something to do with the murder weapon. Oh, I forget. Look, it's all written somewhere in here, okay? His powers of rec recollection never fail to impress. Maybe we should show him the murder weapon. He might jag his memory. Okay, I'll do that real quick then. Ding, ding. So something was falsified about the murder weapon. Was it? Because I noticed this stain. You can't examine it. I noticed it sometime when I was watching back one of the last few streams. It looks like fingerprints, I'm guessing. So I'm guessing that... Or maybe it's just a stain, but maybe they, like, falsified his fingerprints on the... Actually, it said that the blade didn't match. Oh, maybe it was the, uh... Like, the tip of the weapon. Because the tip is missing, which is, like, really random. So that might be it. They might have put, like, the tip of the weapon in, um, Marshall's body. Been like, yep, this is Joe Dark's knife. It has his fingerprints, and it's got a... It's got, it's got the tip of the knife lodged in the victim, so it's got to be him. Um, about this. Hey, is that... It has a tag attached to it, with the label SL9 incident on it. I believe this would be the broken murder weapon you were speaking of. What are you doing with that? Ever since that case has been was closed, that knife's been locked away in a locker. Alright, Gumshoe is out of the loop. I was about to say, how do you not know this? But yeah. On the day Detective Goodman was murdered, this suddenly disappeared from the locker. And was found in Mr. Edward's car muffler. That's it! Now I remember what that incriminating piece of evidence was. When you showed me that knife, it all came back to me. Well, what is it, Detective? Quick, before you forget again. <laughs> Alright, nice. Let's talk about dark crimes first, though. Joe Dark was 42 at the time of the crime. It was just your run-of-the-mill businessman. And businessman. Businessman. I think it's businessman. I don't know. Because it's one word, I want to say businessman. But I think it's businessman. What made him take to serial killing? One day on his way home from work, he hit someone with his car. Accidentally, or...? With his car? So, it was an accident? An accident, yes. But I transformed him into an animal. An animal? 
He killed a man that witnessed the, the accident. Then he killed the lady who saw the second crime. A kid walked by just then. Oh, heck. A joker came up on the scene and was killed as well. Finally, he turned himself in. Wait, did he say kid? Oh my god, this dude is fucking crazy. I was about to say, whenever I look at this face, I can, I can only think of the toad head in the other thumbnail. But that's wild, oh my goodness. Seems he was a pretty careless animal. Of course, this is all conjecture. There wasn't a single shred of evidence. So he turned himself in. Yes, but in the middle of his questioning, he fled and murdered his final victim. Prosecutor Marshall. Wait, so he turned himself in, but then he tried to kill someone again? That crime was witnessed by someone too, but luckily Dark was arrested on the spot. It's a good thing that last witness wasn't killed. Gee, I wonder who it is. That last witness. AKA Emma. There's no way to present profiles, right? No, I wonder maybe if I can present... Uh, this? I've been studying up on those files. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Edgeworth's pre presentation to think people are accusing him of injustice. I for one ain't buying it, Bull. You're looking into the case for Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah, it was a pretty big deal while it was going on, you know. After all, a serial killer was on the loose. But Lana was pretty clear in her confession. She forged evidence in order to prove Joe Dark guilty. No. So he just doesn't know that's Emma. <laughs> this knife. It was Joe Dark's, wasn't it? That's right. We traced it back to the store he bought it at. Plus it had his fingerprints on it too. Alright, yeah, that is fingerprints then, I think. But no one actually witnessed him using it to murder anyone, right? That's where his luck ran out. Yeah, I was thinking maybe we had to um examine the fingerprints with the thingy, but I don't think Joe Dark would be... Oh, wait. No, no, never mind, he is here. So maybe his fingerprints will be on record? I don't know. Neil. When you take a good look at that knife, you'll see it's broken. You don't have to take a good look to notice that. Yeah, well, anyway. Take a guess where the broken off tip of the knife was found. Right. So they just put the tip into... Neil's body to be like, yep, this is Joe Dark's knife and it was found in the victim and so Joe Dark is the killer. But then the knife didn't fit. So that's okay. That's what did him in. Where was it? The victim, Neil Marshall, was carrying it inside his own body. Whoa, this is unforeseen. It was found deep inside the stab wound. Ooh. Did it match Dark's knife? You bet. Down to the last fiber. That's pretty... conclusive. No, I was about to say, so it's gonna probably turn out that Joe Dark wasn't... didn't kill Neil Marshall. Because otherwise, what would be the point of... but I don't... because who else could it have been? I doubt Neil Marshall just accidentally tripped and fell onto some knife somewhere. Absolutely wasn't Emma, because no way. It could have technically been Lana, I guess, if she was really desperate. She's like, yeah, let's just kill this dude for him, for him Joe Dark. But I really doubt it. I think it's just for the shock of like, oh my god, forged evidence. I don't think there's anything else behind it, but maybe. Stabbed in the back, died from punctured heart and lung, a knife tip was found in the wound. The broken tip was found in the victim's body belonged to murderer Joe Dark. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. That's all I know. Can I ask you one more thing? What is it? If it's money you need, you should ask <laughs> you should ask Chief Gan. <laughs> it's not money, but it does concern the chief. His office is a crime scene, right? Case where prosecutor Neil Marshall was murdered. The chief's out now, and his office is locked. But we'd like to have a look around it, that's okay. Well, any detective's ID card can unlock the door. What? Really? Can we use braces? But if I let a civilian in there, I'd be charged with breach of trust. Breach of trust? Simply put, I'd be canned. Oh. Sorry, Bell. 
I don't plan on getting fired because of you. How about this ID card? It was Detective Goodman's. That won't work either. The data was deleted the day he died. Damn. Oh. That makes sense, but damn. So in other words, Gumshoe's our only chance of getting into that office. I wonder if there's something we could show him that would make him change his mind. Oh my god, I know what it is. It just came to me. I know exactly what it is. I hope. Let me quickly... Look at this. I never see a snail marshal 27 dead at a time death. Cause of death, single stab wound, piercing, heart lung. Assessment died from blood loss in under 10 minutes. That might be important. Weapon found in wound was missing tip. Anyway, I know exactly what it is. Angel! Angel! My dear lady! Um, I cannot go there. Angel! It's gotta be. We gotta give- we gotta give him a lunch. It's gotta be. It has to be. Fuck! Never mind. I really thought that was gonna be it. What else do we have that could convince Gumshi then? Something of Edgeworth's, maybe? Damn, I really thought that was it. No one's here today. Not even Miss Star. Everyone's probably busy looking into what exactly went down in the evidence room. That must be where the detectives are. But we proved in court today that on the day of the crime, no one was murdered in the evidence room at 5.15pm. Yeah, I thought we were finally making some headway in our case. But instead, it looks like we just ended up making Lana look even more guilty. Hang in there, Lana. I've got to find all the answers by tomorrow. Damn, I really thought that was going to be it. Edgeworth! I wonder if Edgeworth's back yet. There he is. It looks like he's writing something. Oh my god! <gasps> what are you doing here? He sure was quick to throw that paper on the floor. Ew. Tough day in court, huh? Hmm. I've had to live the past two years with rumors flying around. What's another uh, allegation to me? Cheer up, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm rooting for you. That's Edgeworth for you. Hi, Void. Welcome in. I hope you're having a fantastic day. And if not, I hope that it is gonna get better. I'm good at speaking. <laughs> Welcome in. I hope you're having a great time. That's Edgeworth for you. Always trying to hide his real feelings. So, what do you want? Unlike some people, I don't have all day. Hi, Edgeworth. Let me just quickly... I doubt that we'll be able to, because Edgeworth's right there. But... I wonder what he was writing before. Come on, Mr. Wright. Let's take a look. You crazy? Edgeworth's sitting right there. Just distract him. I'll check it out. Uh, hey, Edgeworth. Is that Detective Gumshoe out the window there? Oh no, he's falling to the ground! Hold on, first let me see what this girl is doing crawling around my feet. He didn't even look. What? Letter of... If you're having trouble reading, I'll read it for you. It says letter of... Resignation? What? Why am I- No! That's- Uh, he feels guilty for using forged evidence- Edgeworth, no! Oh, he's a- He's hacking dramatic as heck, you little hacker. You little hacking dude. It says letter of resignation. Resignation? Edgeworth, you don't mean- I'm tired, right? I feel as if- Something inside of me has died. But Mr. Edgeworth, none of it is your fault. I know the path I've walked, you don't need to tell me. And the path I've walked hasn't been a just one. I can't forgive myself what I've done, and no one else should forgive me either. Uh-oh. I think he's serious. Well, really? The letter of resignation didn't tell you that? Mr. Wright, please, you have to do something. This letter of resignation? I wonder if I can use it for, sec for anything. Oh, gumshoe! That's gotta be it. We gotta show it to Gumshoe be like, yo, Edgeworth is about to about to leave. You need to help us. Watch the evidence. There's no excuse for what I've done. Two years ago I used false evidence to obtain a guilty verdict. That's what it all breaks down to, and nothing I do can erase that fact. 
But you didn't know, did you? I mean, that the evidence was falsified. The police department and the prosecutor's office share a, share a bond of trust. If that bond is broken, we stand to lose everything. The police department's error is my error. My responsibility is the prosecutor in charge. That fact remains the same no matter what excuses I might have. Miss Regerus. I take pride in my work. So tell me why. Ain't nothing but a... Uh, why has it all come to this? Even Edgeworth can't keep this kind of emotion bottled up. Tomorrow's trial, my dear fellow. Are you up for the trial tomorrow? Hmm. <laughs> First last year's trial. Now this one. Just seems all you do is worry about me. To be honest, you're getting on my nerves. Damn. But Mr. Edgeworth, you can't just walk out on the trial. Tomorrow is the last day. It's too late to change prosecutors. I'll bet that's what my superiors are banking on. I never thought that case would come back to haunt me like this. What do you mean? The list of evidence. It seems too short. Most lists run twice as long. It's only half as long as most lists. That is odd. After Neil Marshall was murdered, I became prosecutor for that case. I may not have been part of the, the investigation, but I knew what I had to do. Use the evidence I was given to prove the suspect guilty. That was really the only thing on my mind at the time. Say, we just saw a picture that taken around that time. Should we ta show it to him? That picture. Something seems strange about it. Alright, I gotta show it to him and be like, One second, I wanna figure out what's strange first. I feel like it's probably just the vase, right? Maybe the knife I was thinking earlier. What's that? That's just a random decoration. Mr. Gant, Lana, Neil. Ooh. Is that? That is different. I see, my dear fellow. Ew. I see. Interesting, my dear fellow. Yeah, that is it. Huh. I think maybe something about them. Or that in the background. Or even this knight is really oddly positioned. Like, it's in front of Lana. Like, you kind of moved a bit to the side, Jesus. Yeah, that is odd. Well, I faded out, because I'm epic. Oh, I tried to present it. I am not in present. <laughs> My dear fellow, how does it feel to be a little bitch? This picture was hanging on the wall in Chief Gant's office. <laughs> we took it. The sword is also broken. Sword and shield. That's cool. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He just started making a name for himself. Looks like this was taken when he received the King of Prosecutors trophy. Speaking of that, there's something that bothers me. Yes? The trophy Mr. Marshall's holding. It's a little di it's a little different than yours. Yes, you're right. Ah, uh, I remember now. Remember what? That was what the official Prosecutors trophy looked like until two years ago. Was that the murder weapon? And that's why they changed it? Because, I mean, it's not very sharp. No. Nah. <laughs> There's a story behind its design. A story? Sounds interesting. Would you mind telling it to us? It's simple, really. Contradiction. That's what the award's based on. Could you tell us again about what happened that day? The day Detective Goodman was murdered. You were participating in a ceremony over, the, over at the station, right? I've never cared for ceremonies, but I had to attend that one. Because you were awarded this. Those receiving awards can't exactly skip out on the ceremony. I finished up at the office in the morning then, then drove over to the police department. You finished up at the office? Yes, just odds and dens, clerical stuff. I didn't plan on returning to the office that day. That is, until I was asked to take something back. Oh my god, he was being framed. He's being framed so hard. 
No way. He was being framed so hard. Take something back. That random ass, yeah, the screwdriver. Oh my god. This. Oh yeah, Chief Gan asked you to hold on to that, didn't he? Yes, it was a piece of evidence in a case that was closed half a year ago. We have not heard anything about this case, no way it's important. This screwdriver is a red herring, that's not... That is the word. Chief Gant was like, oh yeah, take this back, because a buddy was in his car. He asked me to bring it back to the prosecutor's office. Still don't know where Lana fits into this, but I guess she... Probably was gonna do something with the body. But then she stabbed it for some reason. Unless Angel's lying, but it doesn't seem like it. I don't know. That's the story we heard yesterday. So, you came back here to the prosecutor's office because the chief asked you to. That's right. King of Prosecutor's Trophy. This award originates from an ancient Chinese tale. In Chinese, the word contradiction is written with two characters. The first means halberd, and the second means shield. Have you heard this story? Okay, it's not a sword, it's a halberd. Sorry, Edgeworth. Me? Oh, uh, I'm American. <laughs> sure, everyone knows that in America. Oh, uh, why don't you tell it, though? For Emma's sake. Very well. Why is this playing? Long ago in the kingdom of Chu, there was an arms merchant. One day he presented the king with two items. The first was a halberd, he claimed could slice through any shield or armor. The second was a shield he claimed could withstand any weapon. I see. It's both of them are broken because it's like, how could both of them... It contradicts each other because if you use the halberd on the shield, it... How, how could how could they both do the do their thing? You know, how could it withstand it, but also how could it break it? Is contradictions? They're all bricks. The second was a shield. He claimed it could withstand any weapon. Hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. Okay, I like the music now. Those claims contradict each other. <laughs> oh, that's a silly bit. Okay, I like that very perceptive, but then again, you've heard the story before, right? Anyway, as you mentioned, the very descriptions of these items discredit them both. When the king pointed this out, the merchant was left speechless, and thus the Chinese word for contradiction was born. That's a funny bit, I was like, why is there cross-examination music playing? That's silly, I like that. <laughs> oh, I see, so the chipped shield and broken knife symbolize... It's a halberd, actually. Precisely so. They symbolize the merchant's items. The ancient tale ends with the merchant at a loss for words. But it's in our nature to pursue matters to their conclusion. Even if it results in something as ugly as this. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. I learned something new today. That's funny. If that's so, then why were you only given a shield? You'll have to ask... You'll have to ask Chief Gant. Two years ago, he had the halberd part of the award ab abolished. Two years ago, that was when the Jodak killings happened. Something happened. Something sussy, something sussy. It was the murder weapon, I tell you. Chief Gant. Two years ago, the halberd was removed at Gant's behest, giving it its current form. Well, I think that's about it. Bye, Edgeworth. Oh? Angel? Angel? Excuse me. Angel, here she is. Absolute queen. Would either of you care for a quarter pound of roast beef? Miss Star. I guess she's out of lunches. You certainly are the curious sort, aren't you? Kind of like... The first person who sucked a cow's nipple to discover milk. I... I took a screenshot. <laughs> no way. I, madame. 
that's so I I can't tell what is wrong with this quite I know that there's something that is just inherently just makes me go why but I can't quite put my hand on it I why did you say that <laughs> oh dear <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm just- I'm- Still, I never thought you'd go digging up that case from two years ago. Everyone in this trial was involved in the SL9 incident. Not only that, but the murder occurred on the very day the evidence from that case was... due for transferal. This can't all be attributed to mere coincidence. Aren't you forgetting something? You know, that little scene I happened to witness. Okay, yeah, we get it. Lana stabbed Gooden and We get it. The instant Lana stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. No matter how much of the past you dig up, it won't change what I saw. Roast beef is meant to be savored when eaten. Uh, why is this like a whole... Like, she get, she showed one of the boxes. Why didn't it just... Why wasn't it in there? Why is it like... Like an evidence thing? Are we gonna need some roast beef? Miss Star's hatred toward Lana... It all dates back to two years ago. Uh, is there anything I could present about that? I don't think so. Maybe... This? I don't have anything else to tell you. Miss Star. The only thing I can give you now is a puppy seed rice set. Talk about cheap. Heat this and maybe you'll be able to tell black from white in court tomorrow. Dark Investigation. Yo, Dark. That's a name I'll not soon forget. We trailed him for half a year. Oh, the pressure. Still, I don't think I was ever more alive than I was then. Those days were steamier than a bowl of hot gravy. Poor old Jacob Marshall, though, must have been going through hell. You mean, because of his brother's death? They were close, those two. After Neil died, something took over Jake. He became obsessed. Seeing Jake like that made her all the more desperate. Her. Lana Sky. My sister. The best of the best were put on the SL9 case. Of course they were led by that legendary duo. I love this picture, they look so heckin' fancy. Lana and Chief Gant. After cast closed. That legendary pair was the reason we were able to keep up our investigation. That's why we were so shocked over how it turned out. You mean, with the forging of the evidence? Don't get me wrong, Joe Dark got what he deserved. Still, it was obvious the evidence produced in court was being manipulated. Items our team never found would suddenly appear while other items were kept secret. But you don't have proof anything illegal was done. I'm proof enough of what happened. After that case, all of us save Goodman were relieved of our duties. Most without even so much as an explanation. Then Lana Sky transferred to the prosecutor's office and became chief prosecutor. Lana always wanted to be a prosecutor. Nothing's quite as simple as it appears. Huh? Plana Sky was merely being used as a pawn. That's my take on the matter. She was being used. Legendary duo. Aiming Gant on Lana Sky. I'm showing you this picture once again. Gant led the investigation with Lana's second in command. They were the best. They solved all kinds of cases together, didn't they? Damon Gant's magnetism is, in particular was almost unreal. His magnetism? By that I mean his ability to attract, to attract evidence. Uh-oh, that's sussy. He had produced the most incredible evidence in the cases he handled. Incredible evidence? You mean... Oh yes, there were rumors about him even back then. No one dared confront him, though. I take it she's talking about forged evidence. 
as per usual. Back then, everyone looked up to Lana. All the detectives wanted to be like her. Really? Oh, yes. Myself included. I was a fool, really. She hated anything crooked and always watched out for the other detectives. That's why she was so concerned for Jake. Mr. Marshall. When Jake's brother was murdered, she felt as if she had lost her own brother. If it wasn't for her, I don't think Jake would ever have recovered from his shock. That's what makes it all the more infer inf infuriating. It's been a while since I've <laughs> looked at that word. I was like, what, what could this word possibly be? Miss Star. That's why he'll never be able to forgive her. Why did she have to turn so cold after that? <sighs> Lana transferred to the prosecutor's office two years ago, didn't she? Yes, thanks to Chief Gant's powerful influence. Chief? That's right. Having solved the SL9 case, his position as Chief was secured. There was only one thing left for him to control. And then no one could stand in his way. Prosecutors? <gasps> oh my goodness. The prosecutor's office. Oh my god. What? You mean, that's why Lana was transferred? If he could control the chief prosecutor, he could control the prosecutor's office. That must have been his goal all along. But, but how could he control Lana? I don't know, but one thing's for sure. Ever since that case ended, she's never been the same. It's only logical to conclude. There must have been a reason for her change. At last. I'm finally getting close to the bottom of this ugly mess. Thank you, Miss Star. You listen to me, Rookie. It takes more than just ingredients to create, create fine cuisine. I hope you turn out to be a better chef than I've been. Thank you, Angel. Your help is appreciated. I don't think there's anything I can present. Maybe the knife. Maybe she has more to say on that. Nope. Never mind. Dick! Oh, golly. Where is he? Oh, you're back. You're still here. I'm gonna make 150 copies of these files. Brewing coffee, copying files. I'm turning into a regular DJ. You're a DJ as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think he means desk jockey. Oh. Oh, that DJ. I've never heard of that term, but yeah, I did think of something else. I gotta admire your persistency, but my answer is still no. I'm not letting you in the chief's office, period. It'd be my neck on the line. What about uh, Edgeworth? That office is the last crime scene in the SL9 incident. I have to take a look in there. There's gotta be something we can do to make the detective change his mind. Like maybe over then, afterwards, a letter of resignation. What's this crumbled up piece of paper? No way! Mr. Edgeworth can't be serious! Is he ever not serious? I can't believe they've pushed him this far! Mr. Edgeworth really feels responsible. When I first met him, I thought he was cold as ice too. But I know different now. He trusted us detectives to provide him with sound evidence. But we just... We betrayed him. Detective... That's it. I've made up my mind. But... Here, take my ID card. We can't do that. If someone found out... They wouldn't let you off the hook with another lost item report. Look at me. It's no secret I'm already out of the loop. After all, I'm friends with Mr. Edgeworth. Depending on how this case turns out, I may already be as good as terminated. What? So at least let me do this. For Mr. Edgeworth's sake. Alright, detective. 
Thank you. Police Department ID card allows access to areas of completely open to detectives. Can we look at it, I wonder? Oh, look at him! Little hacker, little dude, can we present this to him? What's that? Detective Gumshoe isn't very photogenic, is he? I think that was to examine this. Whatever you do, just don't say that to his face. Look, his eyes are half shut. Yeah, and his mouth is half open. Hey, each of his shirt buttons is off a notch. Is off a notch. And he's got the narrow end of his tie in front. This is how he always looks. I I did see a tweet earlier that was like, there's a screenshot of Gumshoe where you present his face and it's like the exact same face. I hope that this is it, because I want to do it so bad. I think this goes beyond being a photogenic issue. Please, I want to present this. That's why I wanted to present it. Because if this, if this is that, I want to I wanna get it, because it's funny as heck. And I don't think I would have thought to do it if I hadn't seen that tweet. Please. Let me share a little advice with you as a detective. If you don't have a clue, keep your trap shut. I'll uh, keep that in mind. Damn, it's not here. I'm so sad. Sheesh. Aw, oh, I was so hoping it would be that. Because that is the face that it was, I'm pretty sure. Aw, oh, that's sad. I was so hoping to get that. Why is it dark? Why is it dark? What's happened? What's happening? Here goes, Mr. Wright. That's because we're not in there yet. Click. Is there something wrong? Nah, there's nothing wrong with this dude. We're in! If anyone finds us now... Detective Gumshoe's a goner. If that happens, I'm counting on you to bail me out. Eek! No! Did she slap him again? Emma, no! Emma! Sorry, I thought you were a ghost. I didn't even know you could slap a ghost. Ah! Detective Gumshoe! What are you doing sneaking up on that us like that? Uh, I, I wasn't sneaking. I was just worried something might go wrong. So I came to. That's nice. It makes sense, because if you're here, then what's the point of giving us your ID card? Gumshoe's ID card crushed and rendered unusable in pocket. What? What? Hey, don't do that to my card! What? Why didn't we give it back to him? I'm so... okay. I hardly ever get a chance to come in here, so I figured I'd have a look around myself. Besides, we're all in this together now. Yeah, either way, if we're from him here, he's done for, so he might as well come too. You really do want to get a prior, don't you? Not if we're lucky. Now, come on, let's see what we can find out. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, we can talk. That desk on the other side of the room, was that your sister's? Yes, that's where I was waiting for Lana. On that day two years ago. Is anyone using it now? No, sir. This is entirely Chief Gant's office now. He practices a strict policy of preserving the crime scene. That's a strange reason to leave it there. He leaves it as a... Is it a... I... 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 That but scab man's world. He leaves it as a warning to everyone else. He wants us to always be alert. He told us himself at our New Year's party. Of course, he was pretty intoxicated at the time. I see. So, ever since Lana left, no one ever touches that desk. No one except Chief Gant, and the cleaning lady isn't here each morning. Still, two years have passed since that incident. There can't possibly be any clues remaining. Alright, so I'm just gonna say it, because I think it's pretty obvious at this point. I'm quite certain Yan is- Gant is the person who killed... Goodman. So I'm wondering... Uh, is there a chance that... Hmm... I'm thinking, is it like Von Karma in the DL6 incident? Did Gant, like actually kill Neil. But why? I mean, it's a lot more plausible than Lana doing it, but... 
That couldn't have been- Ah, uh, maybe. Because he was also questioning with Neil, right? Neil and Gent were questioning together. He ran away and Neil chased after him, so Gent could have easily also chased after him. Then... Hmm... I don't know. Ooh, I kind of want to see that hacking picture of, um, that picture of the person with the knife above Neil's head again, because I wonder if that is Gant instead of Dark. Because I'm pretty certain that the person down, down there was Neil. It looked like him from what I could remember, but... I wonder if maybe it was Gant that stabbed Neil to frame Dark? I think that's fairly plausible. I actually don't remember. I feel like this is the part of the case where I actually just don't really remember anything. Like, I, I kind of stopped paying attention, stopped watching at this point when I first watched through it. Like, this was a long case and I did not have the energy to, to care, really, back then. So yeah, I don't know. It's also so hot. Oh my god, I'm sweating. Can I ask you something? Sure. You only came here to look around, right? Because it's one of the SM9 crime scenes. I mean, that's your only reason for coming here, isn't it? Why do you ask? You don't think... Nah. You wouldn't be... No. There we go. I was wearing shorts underneath um, my pants because it got a bit cold earlier. So I just put on like an extra layer. But I have like shorts on underneath because it's so hot. I just have to. I just have to. No, there's no way. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Okay. Now then, let's look around a bit more. Hey, hold on! Not so fast, buddy! Huh? What is it? When someone tells you don't worry about it, it's supposed to start bothering you, pal. You don't just let it go with that. So, sorry, I just respect your boundaries. That's... That's kind of weird that you expected me to delve deeper as soon as you said not to worry about it. I respect boundaries, gumshoe. Dick, even. This guy's starting to get on my nerves. Shut up, Phoenix. <laughs> Very... Very on edge with both of them, but... <laughs> okay, so what's bothering you? You two don't think... I, 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 said, I said that rude rude thing to Gumshoe, but I mean, I do that same thing too. I'm like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. And then someone's like, okay. I'm like, no, please worry about it. <laughs> Chief Gant, you might be a suspect, do you? What? He's right, Mr. Right. What do we think of him? Sussy as heck. Sussy as heck. I'm pretty certain. I don't actually remember who the uh, killer is in this case, but I'm fairly certain it's Gant. Fairly certain. Chief Gant, so it's finally come to this. I know that he's a bad dude, but I don't know if he's the killer. I'm quite certain he has to be. What do I think of him? Perhaps it's best I don't divulge my feelings. Yet. There you go, ignoring me again. Welcome to... Don't worry about it. Oops, <laughs> wrong thing. Well, let's get out of here. <laughs> now, that, now that we've gossiped a bit, uh, let's leave. I'm gonna look at the organ. Could we have examined this earlier? I don't remember. I don't think so. Could we have? Yeah, right? I don't know. The Chief's organ sure is a sight to behold. Oh, he had a piece of paper. We have to look at that. Sure is a sight to behold. Occasionally, we hear him playing it from the criminal affairs department. That's on the second floor, and this is the 15th floor of an entirely different building. Damn! When, the, when a detective screws up, the chief calls, calls them to his office. And makes them listen to the organ for hours. What's so bad about that? He succeeds the soul. After that, the detective can't hear anything for days except for the ringing in their ears. A actual torture. So, it's an instrument of punishment. Literally. But aren't the chief's ears affected? He never listens to anyone anyway. That's beside the point. Right, I'm pretty certain this is Gant's desk, so let's... Look over here, just to examine everything, just for the sake of it. Oh, is this that window where the lightning struck? 
Look at that giant window. Makes me want to crash through it and jump outside. Does it? <laughs> That's still papyrus core if you come shoe. Uh, this is the 15th floor. I know, I was just saying. Saying what? Ever since making detective, I've always dreamed about doing something like that. Jumping out a window? <laughs> Note to self, Detective Gumshoe has a lot of dreams. So long as he doesn't go crashing through that window. When he gets fired. Don't say that. These shelves are mostly empty. Lana must have cleaned them out when she transferred over to the prosecutor's office. There's a small picture frame on the left shelf. Hey, this is when Lana and I went to that theme park. It is also lagging slightly. I might take off the VTuber model by the time that it's, um... By the time that it's the trial parts. This was taken on that day two years ago. Dejo Dark ran out, of, ran out of the questioning room and tried to kill Emma. After receiving his award trophy, Mr. Marshall took a picture here. Then went along with Chief Gun to question Dark. I bet he never knew he'd be dead just a few hours later. Gee, you think? This was Lana's desk. It sure is tidy. Lana's always been a meticulous cleaner. There's not even any dust on it. Looks like someone's still keeping it clean. Does Lana ever come back here? No. She again must still keep it clean in memory of their partnership. But the partners, they were the stuff legends are made of. Does he keep it in memory of her, or in memory of the crime? Pretty certain that's everything over here. There's also that same window over here. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, it happened on Lana's side, didn't it? He can see pretty far, far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit, oh heck. Um, you know what? You know what? I'm- I'm re- Heg! Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk! Speaking of that, when we were here earlier... Oh, it's you two! Chief Gant! He put that paper he was reading in his desk. I wonder what he was reading. This looks like a list of evidence. A list of evidence? In most cases, the list runs twice as long as this, though. Hey, look at the case name. Whoa, it's SL9. Huh? SL9 incident. Whoa, Paul. I wonder what this is doing here. Hold on, detective. What did you just say? I said, I wonder what... No, about evidence lists. Normally, they're twice as long. Evident uh, Edgeworth already said this. He has a copy, too. We already know about this. That's right. I guess there wasn't a lot of evidence. A half-sized list of evidence. The list of evidence, it seems too short. This lists. Run twice as long, Mr. Wright! What would the other half of the list be doing here? Oh wait, this is the other half! Oh, okay, that, that makes more sense. That, that makes more sense than what I was thinking. I thought it was just a copy. This was the worth it, worst thing to examine. Gant's gonna come in here and be like, Hey, what are you doing? Get out! Oh, I skipped this so that I could look back on it. It was the window, I think? I skipped it so that I could click back on it and read it all. But I... but I, I didn't. <laughs> now I clicked on the desk, which is like the one thing that I didn't want to click on. I knew it. The chief must be hiding something about that case. It would appear so. Let's do evidence in the SL9 incident was ripped in half, so this part is all I've got. Oh, nice. I can still examine stuff. Alright, awesome. Why can I not read the evidence? Ooh. What the heck? Can I... Where? I'm, I'm figuring it out. Oh, oh! Oh! Close? Close? There we go. Huh. 
Oh, oh, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I wonder what this is. It looks like someone drew some kind of sketch here. What is it? Did you find something? I can't make it out. I better keep quiet about it for now. Huh? Oh. No, it's nothing. Why are your eyes moving about like that, Mr. Wright? I better not forget about this picture. <laughs> Why are we not showing it to Emma? Anyway, I want to look at the window. You can see pretty far from 15 stories up. If you were to drop that suit of armor from here... That was it. That was what I missed. <laughs> I already knew that. I thought there was something afterwards that I missed. At first, the chief wanted to use stained glass for this window. Really? Why didn't he? I had a bang outside, so I just looked out the window. It's fine. They say he changed his mind because he wouldn't be able to see the view. Oh. Stained glass or not, it's a huge window. And this is the real deal, isn't it? This armor and these weapons. Sure is, Bull. The chief doesn't care for imitations. Where's the pipe organ? Now this armor. Do you know how many taxpayer dollars must have gone into this room? Best? Best Phoenix? What? You mean we're paying for this? That's it. I'm not paying one cent of my taxes. You don't have any taxes to pay. Shh. Be careful of what you say. Who knows? The chief may be hiding in this armor as we speak. I don't think he'd fit in there. Even if he did, he'd never be able to get back out. Cut it out. You guys don't know how scary that guy can be. We can look at this again. There's also a safe. I assume the safe is the last thing that we have to examine. Wow, look at the size of Chief Gant's desk! We found this inside the drawer. A list of evidence from the SL9 incident. Miss Regerith had the other half of that list. What would this list be doing here? We better look a little more into this list. Alright, talk to Regerith about the list, got it. This is a safe, isn't it? Safe? That word is ripe with intrigue. Uh, okay. If you say so. It looks like a code needs to be answered in this panel to open it. Is that... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... A 7 digit number. I think I might just know what it is. Do you know what it is? I have a hunch. Oh, I know! You wanna try my birth date? It's... <laughs> Do I have to input it? Hack. Hack. I have a better idea. Here goes nothing. Um... Oh, heck, I can't look at evidence! That sucks. Um... Oh, I also can't back out. So I'm fucked if I don't know what it is. Because I'm literally stuck on... Unless if I fail it, it gets me out. I wanna look at the evidence. Ding, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. I guess that wasn't it. Gant. Dun 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 Chief of Police. Oh no, that's this. Oh wait! Oh! The IDs are seven digits! Oh, I know what it is. I guess that wasn't it. I was so sure that was the number. One, 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 one. Maybe we should check the card record again. Seven digit number. Ugh, where have I seen that before? <laughs> I'm talking shit, but I mean, <laughs> I didn't know. That's a really, like, even if it is, like, his code, like, that's just a really shitty, like, Bro, bro, you haven't got a better seven-digit combination than seven, 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 seven. Like, bro, you're just asking for people to look into your secrets. It was seven, right? Because it was seven sevens. Woo! Bingo. What number did you enter? 
Whose birthday was that, Paul? Seven, 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 seven. The final ID card number on that record. What? The number of the mysterious ex executive officer who entered the room that day. You mean... Seven, 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 seven? That ID number? I think you're one seven shy this time. Why do they put it in letters when it's one seven less or more? I can't tell. It's too many letters. I think you're one seven shy this time. This can only w mean one thing. That's Chief Gant's ID number. Say, anyone care to look inside? Uh, I wanna, I wanna look, I wanna look. What is in here? Is there any money in there? How much does he have stashed away? Look, it's a, a... Ooh, it's the hacking thing. A short from a broken cup. This somehow looks familiar. Where have I seen this before? <laughs> There's something else in here, too. What's this? It looks like a piece of leather cloth. That's a hand. This is a handprint, isn't it? Hey, I saw someone wearing a shirt like that once. You think the chief made up that design? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, well, it was just a thought. Is that it? This is all that was in the safe? Apparently so. It's empty now. A piece of cloth with a handprint on it and a broken uh, st st shard of vase. That didn't skip, I just skipped accidentally. They look like pieces of evidence. Yeah, but unless you can prove they have something to do with this case, I'm afraid I can't just let you take them. After all, it's my neck on the line here. Parade. Now I have to prove their relevancy to get them. How are these two items related to the S Online incident? Come on, there's gotta be something we can show the detective. Alright, so let's present the vase. Then I don't know about the heck, I don't know about the cloth, but. Probably something I'm missing. Detective Gumshoe, could you have another look at this jar? I remember when the three of us put that back together. Ah, uh, those were the days. It's kind of early to be nostalgic. Wasn't this jar a piece of evidence from that case? That's right. One of the shards had an SL9 incident sticker on it. Doesn't this ring any bells? You know, that fragment we just found. You mean this one that was in the safe? Yes, that one. That was in the safe. Oh! Now that you mention it, it's ringing a lot of bells. Let's see if it fits. Assemble fragments. What do you mean, leave them be? Here, let me take that. Sh let me see that shard. I'll take a crack at this. Get it? It's a cracked vase. Is it a vase? I think so. Go ahead, Bell. Show us what a rookie can do. Mr. Wright, here's some glue. If I can piece this together again, it'll prove Chief Gant was knowingly hiding evidence. There it goes. It's one piece. Why is this? Oh gee, I wonder. I wonder how it fits. I wonder how. I wonder how. It... Whoa, <laughs> guys, guys, it fits. Oh my god, that's crazy. There, it fits like a charm. That of course means Chief Gant willingly and knowingly hid a piece of this jar in his safe. Huh? In other words, he concealed a piece of evidence from the SL9 incident. But... Hey guys, get a load of this. What is it? This piece you just attached. It's different from the others. It's got a line instead of just dots. There's a reddish line on it. A reddish line? A red-white? Of blue corp? That's blood. <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god, there's blood on this vase, guys. Guys, have you, have you, have you realized? There's blood on the vase, guys. <laughs> I don't get it. Why would Chief Gant hide this in the safe? Unstable jar evidence, final fragment found in Chief Gant's safe blood traces. Well, I think that's it. I must... Uh, I must have something for the other piece of evidence. Dun... Dun 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 dun
Bloody handprint. Oh yeah. Oh, I figured it out. You know, Officer Marshall? Of course I do. He was like a mentor to me. When I first started out, he even gave me a small cactus. Really? He said, Dick, she'll listen to all your troubles. Not to solve Detective Gum, she talks to a cactus. I believe he's just a patrolman now. Someone ought to trade places with him. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, I figured out what it is. It's the fingerprints. Detective Gumshoe, I'd like you- I'd like you to have a look at this. Hey, I know what that is. So, you want to take some fingerprints? That's a great idea, Detective. Alright, go to town. Sheesh. What are you- what are you doing? Why are you- why are you sticking out your hand like that? Go ahead, take my fingerprints. Um, it's not your fingerprints we want to take. Also, I'm pretty certain that's not how that works. Oh? Come on, this isn't the time for jokes. We're talking about that cloth we found in the safe. Oh, heh <laughs> I knew that. The one with the handprint on it, right? Sheesh, where's your sense of humor? I'm getting so ready for the da 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 <laughs> I knew it, I knew it was coming. Okay, Mr. Wright, let's check for prints. Sprinkle the powder on the cloth. Then, once they've been absorbed into the prints, blow the rest away. What are you, my mom? I don't have to be told a million times. Alright, let's get this over with. I mean, Phoenix, it seems like you do have to be told a million times. You are needing to be told a lot of things a lot. Uh, this one looks the most clear. I don't know if it matters, but... Is this gonna be Gant? No, he always wears gloves. Cloth is just saying hi. Of. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Of course it is. It's a lovely, very polite cloth. Oh, I keep pressing enter. I'm a dumbass. Damn, and Gant. Yeah, it's definitely not. Look at that. Oh, Emma! Wait, Emma? Okay, so... Okay... Much fun, Bo! No. How can this be? What are Emma's fingerprints doing here? Hey! You found a match? Whose fingerprints are, were they? Huh? Oh, uh... It seems the prints are too old. They aren't clear enough to get a match. Oh, that's too bad. I thought they'd be Dark's prints. Psst! Hey, you! Over here! Yeah, let's just walk away from Emma and start talking. What's going on here? What are, what are that kid's prints doing inside the chief's safe? Don't ask me. Let's just keep this information from Emma for now. Here. Maybe you should hold on to this. Found in Chief Gant's safe evidence for something, but what? Baz Emma's guy's prints. Well, was I any help? Of course. Thanks to your ID card, we were able to get some hard evidence. Uh-oh, I knew he was gonna come. No, I knew he was gonna come. She washed her hands and used the cloth. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Oh, uh, well, she used this towel to dry off her hands, and that is sussy. I was trying to think of something to say. <laughs> now that's not very kind, is it? In other words, if it wasn't for his ID card, he would have been useless. Oh, okay. Manipulate mansplain manho. Okay. Jesus. What the heck? That's... Bro. Isn't that right, you in the coat? Eek! Chief Gant! I was hoping Emma was gonna slap him. We didn't think you'd be back so soon. Fortunately, I'm a man who believes in signs. What do you mean so soon? It takes half an hour to go to the prosecutor's office. We went there and back. It's been at least an hour, Phoenix. It's been at least an hour. Why did you not think you'd be back in an hour? As I was walking to my meeting, 
I happened to look out a window and saw a stray dog run into a right, right, run right into a pole. Just then, I thought of a certain detective. <laughs> Damn, and that's not rude. You're saying that we're rude, and you're saying that. Do you mean me, sir? Now then, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. Yes, sir. Oh heck, his safe's open. Oh heck. Sorry. Oh, you in the coat. Me, sir. Drop off your ID on the way out. He won't be needing it anymore. But, sir. Now get out. Yes, sir. Well, deadly damn gosh. We'll be on our way too, then. Wait, you, the one without the spiky hair. Don't go yet. Me, sir? I'd like a word with you. But, sir, I'm not a licensed scientific investigator yet. You with the spiky hair. You're free to go. M Mr. Wright. I was about to say I don't think you can just do that, but he is the police. So, maybe he can. I don't know exactly the legality, but I was about to say, like, you can't just force someone to stay. But I, I think the police probably can. Well, golly. Look, Paul, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times. The chief's office is off limits. But no, you just had to go sneaking in there like that, didn't you? I thought you said you didn't care anymore if you were fired. Yeah, but if I knew it'd be like this, I never would have said it. Now that I've seen the evidence Chief Gan was hiding in his office... I think I'm finally starting to get the picture. But why has she kept her eerily, eerily silent about it all this time? Anyway, you listening to me? I'm gonna try to smooth things over with the chief again. Later, pal. What does he mean, she? Lana? Wait, is that the end of the investigation? It has been like two hours, but still. After that, I heard from Emma. She said the police wanted to ask her some questions. So she'll be busy for the rest of the day. Convenient. Oh no, it isn't the end. So it is Lana who was talking about, I assume. Hi, Lana. I see. So the chief asked Emma to come in for questioning. It's no use thinking about it. Tomorrow's the final day in court. I'm committed to doing everything I can to defend you, which is why I'm here. But I've already told you all I can. What you've told me over these past couple of days is absolutely nothing. Not a single useful thing. Really? I believe I did mention something quite important. Something I told you right at the beginning. I said that I was the one who stabbed Detective Goodman. You know, I think I've finally figured it out. I know who it is that's lurking behind your words. Mia did a good job mentoring you. I'm rather jealous. Ugh. It seems Edgeworth was right. Edgeworth? Once you're convinced you know something, no one can persuade you otherwise. Thick-headed is the term he used, I believe. Damn. Now's my chance to get her to tell me the rest of the story. Uh? About what? Keeping quiet. I have to admit, I was more than a little perplexed at first. You insisted you did it, yet there was no incriminating evidence. That's when it hit me. It's not that you're unwilling to, t unwilling to tell the truth. It's that you're incapable of doing so, because of a certain individual. What an intriguing notion. A certain individual, you say? So, you think I'm protecting this person? Protecting? No, I think afraid of is more like it. If I'm not mistaken, the person in question may have persuaded you to silence. For argument's sake, Mr. Wright, who may I, who may I ask is this person you're speaking of? The one I'm supposedly so frightened of. What is this person's name? Well, gee, I wonder. Well, Miss Sky, I should have presented someone stupid like Emma or Meekins or Marshall. Mr. Wright, you are addressing the chief prosecutor. Do not forget your place. I take it she's still not ready to spill the beans. My apologies. Could you please tell me a bit more about what you think you know? About my boy Damon? We were partners until two years ago. I respected him as a detective. 
Assuming he is respectable, then tell me something. Why would he try to hide his crimes? His crimes? Both you and Edgeworth will be brought before a board of inquiry for what you did. Specifically, hiding and for forging evidence. Of course, these are serious offenses. Of course, these are serious offenses. <laughs> Why is it, though, that Chief Gant's name was never mentioned? Chief Gant? Edgeworth didn't know the truth behind the forgery. The only party who could have possibly tampered with the evidence was... Me. I had access because I was second in command of that investigation. Yes, you, but also one other, Damon Gant. If you intend to accuse Chief Gant, you'll need more than just words. Show me proof that Chief Gant falsified evidence in that case. I just found this in a safe in the Chief's office. No, he didn't. We found it in his desk. Oh. Uh, this jar piece. And this piece of cloth. Well, as we did, I guess. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SN9 incident. I do like how they do that, because, I mean, it's the same thought process. So it makes sense that presenting something that isn't mentioned here, which is what I just did, would get you that thing. Because I would have been pissed if that was not the correct answer, and I had to actually present the leather cloth instead. Do you know what these are? They're pieces of evidence from the SN9 incident. I... The person concealing evidence was none other than Chief Gan himself. Now tell me, why are you taking all the blame for him? Also, we did not examine the cloth, did we? Touché, Mr. Ride. I doubt there's anything else, though, yeah. A clear handprint can be seen on the leather cloth. The print belongs to Emma. I think I'll keep this information to myself. Okie dokie, that was... okay. To a shame, Mr. Wright. It's as you summarized. I cannot disobey the Chief's orders. Even if it means being found guilty of murder. Why not? Come now, Mr. Wright. You can't possibly expect me to be able to tell you that. Three days ago, I had no choice but to cooperate. In the murder of Detective Goodman, or perhaps I should say, follow orders. Yes, that's more accurate than cooperate. So did she kill... Is it like a... DGS 2? Kind of deal? I'm not gonna elaborate, but like, where... You know, like he was blackmailing her and she did do the murder, but... Not of her own volition. Although I can't tell you the details, I can say that I was given, a, given an order that day. I need you to dispose of Bruce Goodman's body. Oh yeah, you'll find it inside the trunk of Miles Edwards' car. No, so he was already... dead. I mean, body could still be referring to him alive. I was thinking maybe he was like knocked unconscious and put in the car and then Lana had to kill him. But if he's saying body... I feel like, I don't know, just as I suspected. Despite what everyone believes, you are not the one who murdered Detective Goodman. Correct. I was trying to take the body out of Edward's car. Wait a minute. That is... That's not... where. That's... Right? Am I crazy? Am I... It has the... I actually can't tell. Am I crazy? That looks like... The trunk's lock was broken. And I discovered that murder weapon while inspecting the body. The murder weapon? You mean, Edward's knife? No. Was the... When I found the body, this was the knife stuck in it. 
Oh my god, wait, so... She did, wait. So she did stab Goodman, and took out the knife, for some reason. This was the knife stuck in it. The knife from the S9 incident. Serial killer Joe Duck's knife. I don't know why my attention was brought to it. Was that always like that? Wait, we have a, that picture, don't we? No, it's... We don't have that picture, do we? Heck, it was never put in the court record. We just had to point out the discrepancy. Because um, I noticed in the corner... Because I thought the time... The timeline doesn't make sense, because the, this knife, I didn't mean to click on it, but this knife was in the muffler. So I looked at the muffler, the cloth wasn't there. Her muffler was not in the muffler. So that's, huh. I couldn't just leave, leave that knife in him. So I took it out and stabbed him with another knife. That would be Edward's knife. That's right. Even though he was already dead, my hands were shaking at the thought of stabbing him. That's why I ended up... cutting my hand. And that's the reason for the bandage on your right hand. Yes. It seems that I got blood on the victim's shoes as well. And then... She saw me just as I plunged the, the knife in. Miss Star, huh? Damn. Why did you need to hide Dark's knife so badly? It took a lot of work to finally close the Dark case two years ago. It was over with. I didn't ever want it to be opened again. My intent was to prevent that. By whatever means possible. So, you hit Dark's knife. The weapon used to stab the detective was evidence in the Dark Joe Dark case. If word got out, which it would, the reporters would have a field day with that. So, you wrap the knife in your scarf and hit it. And enter its exhaust pipe. Yeah, the muffler isn't in the muffler. So I think this is a different image. One second, let me... Just quickly, if I get spoiled here, I'll get spoiled. Live on stream. But I don't think I will. Unless there's some other image of Bruce Goodman that hasn't been revealed yet. I want to see the image... Yeah, that is a different knife in the original image. That's a nice little detail. So they changed the muffler and the knife for this specific image, so that's why I only just noticed it. It's because it's only just turned into this. Hannah drew its exhaust pipe. Right. Then I called my sister. To tell her what happened, and to ask her to hide the knife that was inside my muffler. You asked Emma. I didn't want anyone on the force to know about this. That would explain why Emma is so confident. How about Lana's innocence? Speaking of phone calls, I had a bad feeling about one of them that day. A bad feeling? The truth is, after I received those orders from Chief Gant, the first thing I did was make a phone call. A phone call to Patrolman Jake Marshall. Ooh! To Marshall? Why on earth would you call him? The lead investigator for the SL9 incident had been murdered. I wanted that fact to be kept hidden, and I needed help. He was the only other person I could trust. Or at least, I thought I could trust him at the time. However, it seems that after I spoke to him, he went off on an escapade of his own. Oh, you mean... Oh, that's why he broke into the evidence room! Oh! Not wanting the case to die, he decided to take things into his own hands. He disguised himself as Detective Goodman and tried to steal the evidence. He had already stolen the ID card, but it seems he still hadn't made up his mind to break into the evidence room. 
da 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 da. Pop off, Marshall, I love him. After my phone call, any remaining doubts he had must have disappeared. So, your phone call caused the incident in the evidence room. I was wondering how those could be related. I'm afraid that's all I can tell you. But Lana... You've earned my respect, Mr. Wright. Both as a defense attorney and an investigator. Now please... Don't pursue this any further in court tomorrow. Tomorrow's trial. There's only one way to drive off Lana's demons. It's this is my scat, man. I've got to get to the bottom of everything. Detective Goodman's real murderer. And what went down in the chief's office two years ago. My goodness, my lips are so dry. <clears throat> so yeah, I think at the most, these next two trial parts will probably take about Two hours each, let's say. So yeah, I'm planning on going like six, seven, maybe even eight hours. I hope it doesn't come to that, but I am willing to. If it does. Is Emma here yet? This is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma for that matter? It almost seems as if... Edgeworth? Something's been happening behind the scenes. It is Edgeworth. Something's been happening behind behind the scenes, or whatever the fuck I said. I don't care. I accidentally need my desk. Edgeworth. Knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 77777777 ID number is, that is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. It looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Sky will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here. Do you hear what you have to say? This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth. Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. Ugh. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Ganna has on her, it's now. Yo, what up, bitches? Court's now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. What? Well, what the fuck do you- what, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> Judge, what have, you, what have you been smoking? Do, do, I, I don't even know what an opening statement is, Your Honor. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Uh, sussy! Chief Gant! Yo, what up, bitches? Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky! 
Oh, I'm staring deeply. Morning, folks. How's everyone doing? Hey, Aji. Been back to the pool yet? Been swimming? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I can top that, but I can top you. <laughs> uh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> If you don't mind me asking, Chief, what what is topping? <laughs> exactly what is this proposal of yours? Oh god. Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. Ah, oh, she's gonna say I'm guilty. She's gonna say, hey, I'm guilty, close the case right now, I'm guilty, it's a confession, I'm guilty. Oh, Lana, we get it. You, you're guilty. We get it. You stabbed him. We get it. Please shut up. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted a request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. Ugh, Lana, don't confess, please. Okay, I it's it's lagging so much. I think I'm gonna close it for the trial parts. I'll close the video model for the trial parts. Let me put tape on my uh, camera. It's still there, but it is closed. It's just chilling. It's just vibing. There we go. I was actually intending before that to check Task Manager, but I actually just forgot. Let me do it anyway, just in case, but um, it doesn't really matter now because I've already closed it, so... Dun -dun -dun -dun. There is actually quite a bit of stuff open that wasn't meant to be. That might be why it was lagging. But I've already turned off the VTuber model, so... Let's just do this the old-fashioned way. No camera at all. Alright, that should be it. Now hopefully it won't lag at all. What's this all about, Defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's a request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? It's going a lot faster now. <laughs> I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I released the DDS2 covers. Uh, sorry, I, I, I murdered Detective G Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Objection! You can't! Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. Oh, heck, we just been fired! <laughs> But, Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me. But it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial. Even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Edward! Heck yeah! One moment, Your Honor! Oh, Mr. Edgeworth! The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Oh, well, I think this is uh, quite the time to ask her. Uh, what is, what is, <laughs> what is topping, Mr. Gant? Hmm, uh, 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 ignoring that, I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, 
It's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, worthy. <laughs> I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call... Ms. Emma Sky. That was the last person I was expecting. All oh, right, SL9, yeah. I guess that's what we're looking at now. I request the court hears her testimony. Hold it. Mr. Redruth, I'm exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. Ugh. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. A court shall grant the prosecution's request. Heh, <laughs> grant. Like, like Gant. Get it? Heh, <laughs> that's funny. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Uh, Your Honor, he just threatened me in front of the entire court. Did did anyone else hear that? He 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 just threatened me. That was a threat, I believe. Uh this man is suspicious as fuck. He just threatened me. Ms. Emma Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Hi, Emma. Why is she here? Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma. Emma Sky. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. I will not explain why, though. Oh, well, okay then. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Ah, <sighs> two years ago. It is a lot faster without the VTuber model, by the way. The arrow that appears a lot faster to move on. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marsha rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. No, there's no way that's Gant. Maybe... I rarely doubt it. Nowhere. The man raised up his knife and... and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well, that event may begin its cross-examination. Two years ago. Rose's hair looks like an onion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was trying to think of how to make fun of his hair. That is, yep. That is, that is <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> yeah. Two years ago. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. Two years ago, the defendant was a detective at the police department, correct? Yes. She was second in command under the then under then deputy chief of police Gant. My sister, she was the best detective ever. Yes, I remember. Deputy Chief Gant and Miss Sky used to be quite the pair. I believe they shared the same go what the fuck am I saying? I believe they shared the same office, not the same goals. Maybe the same goals, but the same office is what I meant. That's right. I'd always sit at my sister's desk. And dream about playing that organ. I wanted to play it that day too. 
The police department and the prosecutor's office held a ceremony that day. Lana promised to take me to dinner after she finished her work. A man came running in and took me hostage. A man? Who could that possibly be? Yes, Joe Dark. He was a... a serial killer. Joe Dark was brought in for questioning on the day of that ceremony. We were desperate to get anything on him that would lead to an arrest. When he saw his chance, he fled the room, right? Upon fleeing the room, Dark proceeded to take the elevator. He must have been in a panic because the elevator was going up. Then he ran into Sky and Gant's office. There was a lot of noise coming from outside, so I opened up the door to have a look. That's when I saw... him. Neil Marshall rescued me. What was the prosecutor doing there? Wait, shut up, Phoenix. <laughs> that day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. I'm sure that you're already aware of this, Mr. Wright, and I don't know why you're asking this question, dumbass. Deputy Chief Damien Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Almost forgot about Gant. I didn't. <laughs> Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I... I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I don't clearly remember what happened then. But... But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then, lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image in the scene of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. Emma's gonna... Uh, poor Emma. So, you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a... Oh, she... Wait, she did mention that. Where is... Is that what this is? I'm not going to try to get it straight again. Is that what this is? Oh, it does it automatically. Picture's drawn in the back of the evidence list, a magic marker. Got a very bad feeling about this. Oh my god, that's what it is. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. I am a bitch! But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Alright, so I gotta present the thing there. Yes, Your Honor. Press everything anyway, though. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. I wonder where it could be. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now, whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died. Yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken. Shut up, Edward. But what I did draw it, I swear. I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew. That reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. <laughs> well, anyway, let's continue. The scene that imprinted an image in your mind. Can you please describe it to us? The man. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. That must have been a real shock. Even now when I close my eyes, I can still see it just as clearly. Tell us, what were you doing at that moment? I believe you testified that Joe Dark was holding you hostage. When lightning struck and the lights went out, and Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark, I was thrown aside, and the two began wrestling each other. 
Hmm. I'm pretty sure I was watching them. Emma doesn't have any reason to lie. But Lana sure does. I need to get Emma to tell me as much about this as she can. Dun 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 heck. <laughs> it's the cloth. <clears throat> Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet he would insist on denying its existence. Uh-huh! Hey, I'm not the bad guy! All I'm saying is that, as the prosecutor for that case, I, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold, this is the evidence list for this S online incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes. Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. She's so tiny. Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me. Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists. They're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. Oh, is the drawing bigger? Is it... There's more? Is that... No, Edgeworth said there was no drawing. Never mind. You can see the marks here, where they were torn apart from each other. You can't, but okay. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order! Order! But, Miss Guy, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? I assume that's just what she was given. Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Yeah, he didn't have just, like, paper handy, so he just gave her the evidence list. It was just like, okay, draw what you saw. Imagine I was like, hold that pose, I gotta draw this. <laughs> Joe Dark stood over Neil Marshall <laughs> with a knife. And was just like, oh, well, wait a second, I just gotta... One sec. Oh, that's that's a fantastic pause. <laughs> I, I gotta draw this. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I got some inspiration all of a sudden. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor, are you all right, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Redwood's list. I just thought he said it has no drawing. Oh, he was talking about the actual evidence itself, not the back of the... Yeah, obviously. Duh. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Redworth. It's possible. Let's see. <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? <sighs> Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... That thing! <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. I don't know what to do. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's so hot again. Oh, it's so hot again. Oh my fucking god. Oh my god. <laughs> blue Badger. Yes, Blue Badger, my beloved Blue Badger. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh, I'm lightheaded. Oh, I need a moment. Oh, I need a moment. Oh, I need a moment. Oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. 
That was the last thing I was expecting. Oh my god. Why was the blue badger in the... Oh my god. I can't think rationally right now. I, I need to... One second. I need to... Ow. Okay, ow. It's been a while since I've had to... It hasn't been a while, but... I'm not used to walking. I have strawberry laces here. Not strawberry laces, sorry. Strawberry pencils, I think they're called. I think they might be a UK only thing, I don't know. I don't imagine so, but... They might be. I just need to eat real quick. I just- I need to process what I just saw. The blue badger... Was that even a thing back then? Because the cardboard cuss out one was only made by Gumshoe like a few days ago in this. And it looks very different from the original concept of the blue badger that's shown in the criminal affairs department, but when was that one made? I'll leave it there for now. That's that that thing. <laughs> That's why Edward said that thing. <laughs> oh my fucking god. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Oh that is oh my god. Clearly this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he's out of scrap paper. Well, Dan. Have this list for fun against desk. Oh, so now we have the full list. Wait, does the picture actually make something? Because, heck, if they are actually adding it together, then I doubt it's just gumshoe. But maybe. So if we look at it from... No, it doesn't really look like anything. A chandelier, maybe? I don't know. What's that? It might just be... Oh, but the, the, um... Is it like the stained glass? Oh, I didn't pay enough attention, but... This is like the... It wasn't stained glass, was it? But this is the, like, rim of the window. Is there something on the window? But why would that be important? I don't know. We don't have to think about it yet. Blue badger was the moon or sun. It, yeah, that's it, yeah. <laughs> the blue badge was just the moon. Very well. Witness. Will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, yes sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something while she was looking at the picture. Well, I imagine that it would bring back a lot of bad memories, Phoenix. But... Okay. <laughs> This is the picture I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. She was thinking of fanfic ideas. <laughs> After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. To be honest, Emma would write fanfic on Tumblr. Like, you, you just know that she would. You, 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 you can just tell. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about a murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. This is the picture I drew two years ago. Did you draw this picture right after the incident? Um... I think I drew it two or three days later. 
And at first I was in such a state of shock that I couldn't do anything. During that time, the investigation team was reorganized. Detective Goodman was placed in charge under the, dire under the direction of Damon Gant and Lana Skye. Two or three days later, the memory should still have been fresh in her mind. Excuse me, witness. But can you please tell us why this picture is painted all black? That's what she was given, right? Oh no, that's why. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. So at the time, you didn't even know it was Mr. Marshall who'd come to your rescue. No, I couldn't see him clearly. The lighting was so bright, and I was knocked to the floor. You were knocked to the floor? Dark had a tight grip on me, but when Mr. Marshall jumped on him, I was knocked away. I turned around. And that's when the lighting flashed. Poor Emma. I'm just glad she wasn't hurt. What happened after the lightning flashed? Flashed. British! After that, I must have fainted. You mean, you didn't see the actual murder take place? No, I'm sorry. The flash of lightning only drove off the darkness for a split second. Not only that, but the trauma of the situation understandably caused the witness to faint. Do you really need to torture this girl any further? What? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. Anyway, this picture... This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. The blue badger. Sorry for asking so many times, but are you sure you drew exactly what you saw? Of course, this is the exact scene. Was that the last statement, by the way? Because I haven't seen anything contradictory so far. This is the exact scene. He wasn't influenced in any way from your talks with the, detec with the detectives. Are you insinuating we somehow manipulated her memory, Mr. Wright? You already know that the detectives in charge of the case, specifically Damon and partially Lana, who was being controlled by Damon, were hacking corrupt and hiding things and manipulating things. Philip Edward. No, no, of course not. I'd better watch out, or he might find some way to cut my salary. I drew this picture before I heard anything from the detectives, so I don't think anyone's story would have influenced me. Mr. Wright, is there something that's bothering you about this picture? Yes, the blue badger. Huh? Oh, well... That's strange. She claims this is exactly the scene that was imprinted in her mind, and yet, there's clearly a contradiction here. It was already broken! Emma! Emma, what, what do you think about it? What do you think about this knife? Is that not it? I was so sure. I was so sure. That didn't go so well. Well done! I was so sure. Well, diddly dong, gosh. Dun, 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 dun. Well, now I'm confused. Oh, stabbed in the back. It doesn't say it here, but it said, um, stabbed in the back. 
I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But I still remember it just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the... How do I point this out? Just... That's the front. Okay. <laughs> um, I think it's, uh, this part here. Hmm, I don't see what's so strange about that. That's because the drawing stinks. What am I supposed to present? Mr. Ride, how could you? <laughs> the act of making an innocent girl cry should warrant the death penalty. I do agree, but... I guess he means I shouldn't shift the blame to others. I... What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to present? He was facing the wrong way. How am I supposed to show that off? How, how do I... The contradiction, of course, lies here. Take a look at the knife the man's holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Wait, it was the original thing that I said. I... Okay, I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm pissed. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? Its tip is broken too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. Think about it for a second, Your Honor. J just for a moment. Just a little second. Just think about what you just said. Just, just a single moment. Just, just, just run it back through. Just, 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 just a, just a moment. Just once. And think about what you, what you just said. Here's the conclusive piece of evidence to prove Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? I'm also a dumbass. It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. And if the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. Ah! What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand, but then how did the tip get in, you dumbass? And I know a lot about tips going in. So sorry, but I'm... I'm sorry. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't possibly wind up there. That's right, but what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. Bro, we already know that there was falsified evidence, you dumbass! The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken! That's why I asked her so many times if she was so sure she remembered it correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time. But she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Objection, you're a dumbass. Not so fast, Miss Redworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already? About a little something called falsified evidence. You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ah! Order! 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 Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Lan already admitted to that. Your Honor. She also admitted that she was the killer, but that wasn't true, so... Maybe I should shut the fuck up. Please allow me to once again go over the events that took place the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Do Joe Dark along with Jim Damon Gand. I'm fucking up my words again. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there's a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. 
If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's? Could there have been one? No way I'm as mistaken. I don't believe that for a second. I don't know quite what Edgeworth's trying to say, but... Sure thing. There is another one. If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. I believe I'm a... Bro is made of steel. <laughs> In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume, then, that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapons are... The, the, uh, the, uh, the, the murder weapons was already broken prior, prior to the incident. There's only one way. Take a look at this. Here's the real murder weapon. Fuck. The murder weapon was broken prior. That's not the screwdriver. This is not an Andrew moment. Wait, is it actually what I said before? I was kidding. No fucking way. No fucking way it's what I said before. No fucking way. No way. I was kidding. That's fucking hilarious. If anything's broken here, it's you! Huh? I'm sure this must all be very amusing to you, Mr. Wright, but may I remind you that I'm a dumbass! It is correct, I know it, but I just have to present the picture instead of the trophy because they're fucking idiots. Take a look at this photograph. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the award ceremony. Oh my goodness, the trophy that you just presented. What? What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the... the broken murder weapon. Notice the award prosecutor Marshall's holding. That's insane. That's a broken knife. Actually, it's a halberd. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order! 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 Neil Marshall was awarded King of Prosecutors that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dark, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. This broken knife was the only weapon he had in, in this dangerous situation. But that... that can't be! Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors Award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed! What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall! Oh... Oh! Did I say something about that earlier? I'm pretty sure I did. I'm epic! But the prosecutor was the one who actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. Hold it. Wait, I, I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that... Picture scribbled on the back. The blue badger was there. I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew it. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't turned in half at the time I drew this picture. <laughs> the fucking music. I'm gonna kill someone. Oh my god. All this time I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside me, because the blue badger was truly a terrifying sight. <laughs> Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Sky? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, now the blue badger. This should be interesting. 
Oh god. And his recollection. Oh my back. It hurt so much. Also now my legs are cold. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking cry. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw a shadow. This is certainly most unusual. Objection! Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. By the way, I have a spelling mistake. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Hold it! Stop, please! Don't pursue this any further! Oh damn, she's getting desperate. Lana! What's the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this! I've already confessed to the crime! Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Sky. Ah! We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. So Lana's being blackmailed. Almost definitely. And it's something to do with the blue badger. Yeah? <laughs> oh god. Silence. The defense will now begin, begin its cross-examination. Bailiff, please detain the defendant. It seems we're finally getting, getting to the core of the matter. The heart of the matter, as it were, as Mr. Herlock Sholmes said once, a great many years ago. When I saw that man raise his knife... When you say that man, I assume you refer to Joe Dark. Yes, at least, I think it was him. You think? All I could really see were shadows. The power outage that immediately preceded the incident is also documented in the prosecutor's office reports. So then, you... So then, you... I panicked and rushed toward both of them. Why would you do something so dangerous? Bro, shut the fuck up. <laughs> what else could I have done? He was about to stab Mr. Marshall. She seems convinced that Dark was the one holding the knife. But as, as we've just theorized, Mr. Marshall was the one holding the knife. So she pushed Marshall. Theoretically. And then... He somehow died. Why would Marshall be holding the knife like that, though? Like, bro. Stop with the dramatics, you're a prosecutor, not a serial killer. Well, I didn't know that at the time. When that dark guy knocked me down, all I could think was, I've gotta help that other person. I think I... I knocked away the man with the knife. What do you mean, you think? It, it all happened so fast, and I was in shock. I don't remember everything clearly. What I did, it's all kind of a blur. Miss Sky was almost killed before she was a witness to murder about to take place. With so much happening in a matter of seconds, her little disorientation is only natural. I saw the man about to stab the other person, who I thought was Mr. Marshall. I knew I had to stop the man with the knife. What you did was a very brave young girl. So then, what happened next? Bear's judge, love him. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. You can't do this, Emma. You can't. Are you sure about this? Of course. See? I even drew a picture of him here. It will be the other way around, so what does that mean? Bush. It was the chief of detectives who had thought up this hideous beast. I'm assuming... We have to figure out what it actually is now. It's not the blue badger, it's actually something else. But I don't know. And that was just this year. The blue badger didn't exist two years ago. This is all quite verifiable. I know it sounds strange. I was surprised too when I saw him at the police department. 
I had this nagging feeling that I'd seen him before somewhere. No, I finally remember. Oh, brother, just when you thought that thing had caused enough commotion. Tell us, why in the room did you see him dancing? <laughs> he wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I, sh I saw his shadow. His shadow? Like Shadow the Hedgehog, ha, I'm the coolest. So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its willing winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had the he had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. That may well be. But what's important is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. So then, by all means. Please tell us what the shadow really was. What was it I must saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger, really? I just might know. <laughs> the blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. Mr. Wright! In this room? Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us this mysterious blue badger look-alike. Uh... Alright, we're not gonna get anywhere from just sat here. Um... No way it's anything here, right? One that I think that's Goodman's autopsy part. No way it's anything here. Um, it wasn't in the evidence room, right? So that doesn't have any. Where? No fucking way. No fucking way. I'm in shock. I'm in awe. I don't... I don't... Uh, 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 okay. The mysterious blue badger was in fact... This. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of... some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the Blue Badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint? I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. I like that, actually, with the bottom of it looking like the top. No, I think it is. It's this. This isn't right! I'm gonna make it look more like the Blue Badger! Allow me to remind the defense its case hinges on the witness's drawing. If Mr. Wright can't match the shape the witness drew, we cannot accept this claim. I've got to find just the right angle. Maybe I should rotate it vertically a bit more horizontally. Come on, Mr. Wright, you can do it. I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Okay, I get it. I'm a dumbass. I'm a stupid fucking dumbass. I get it, Mr. Wright. You don't gotta be so rude. Miracle or what? No fucking way. No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger. I'm crying. I'm 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 crying. No. It can't be Actually insanity. 
Order, order! The defense has proven its claim. The mysterious blue badge you witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this. Objection. Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, one question remains. What's your point? What do you mean? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. That doesn't change anything. I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Redworth. You see... This changes everything. Indeed. Very well then. Please tell us. What's different now that we just know the witness saw this jar? Location. The oh, I was wondering where the knight was there. It's because the the jar was over here. It was at the other side of the office. Oh. Allow me to take these in turn. At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yes. Well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in the picture taken the day taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Sky's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Sky's office. <laughs> that is kind of silly. <laughs> Just across the room. Yes. Why would you do that? There's no reason. Exactly. Ugh. If there was no reason, you wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? I finally figured it out. So this is why Lana tried to stop the trial. It's too late to quit now, though. Is where... Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. Alright, he's saying this, so I'm gonna say, alright. So Emma knocked Marshall... Oh, golly. Maybe. Not Marshall into the... She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? Uh, that would have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the jet direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? This is what Gant was blackmailing Lana with. That Emma killed Marshall? But I think this is like DL6, and Gant was actually the killer, I assume. What would he have hit? <laughs> the suit of armor, holding a very sharp and dangerous looking sword. Yes. And since the man was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, it would have to have been Neil Marshall, wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you, you can't be thinking. Yes, there is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course the perpetrator would have, would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I, I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, 
Assuming the man in the sky knocked away was actually prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh, <laughs> that was very, very dramatic for just a slump instantly. Oh, golly. Emma, I believe in your innocence. I also wish Gant was innocent because he's awesome and I love him, but... Probably not. <laughs> I don't believe him qu quite as much. You mean... Mr. Marshall died because of... me? No! Oh heck, she fainted. That makes sense. I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life. And then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. Oh heck. Objection! What? What are we saying? I'm sorry, Miss Sky, but given the circumstances... Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. <clears throat> if you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did, wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Redworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? Evidence? I'm willing to bet you don't. Yeah, so it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. Ugh. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. Maya! My, 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 yeah, I know, yeah, I, I need you to come to the courtroom. Yeah, some wild shit is happening. I, I kind of need you. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Hm, <laughs> touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. Huh? You mean, there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edworth? I mean the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life, in one manner or another. That's... that's impossible. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind... Alright, SL9 stuff, so it won't be on the first, like, two. Like, the glove. The glove hasn't really... I guess it, it was just used for the evidence locker thing. It's probably just, like, the glove that Joe Dark wore when he committed the first murders or something. I don't think it's actually relevant to, like, this part of the SL9 incident. I think it's the other part, and it was just, you know... They just needed something rubber to, um... To... Uh, where... Maybe if... Maybe... Dark red stains must see blood traces from the incident two years ago. Only the fragment found in Chief Gant's office still has lines remaining on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's in the evidence. <laughs> this message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, 
Why you stopping nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Sky. <laughs> uh, uh, I almost turned American again. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There's only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys the message from the, from the deceased. And defense attorney. This is the message left by the deceased. This is that blue badger from before, right? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood in this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice. For some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. That's... Alright, that's why Lana is following orders from Gant. He probably forged this. Wiped away the bits that spelled out her name. Except for one shard which he kept. So that he could... Oh my god. Absolute mad lad. Yes, there is a line here drawn in blood. So what you're saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few, few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away, but blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed directions. Precisely so, all we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. No! Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make the letters. There's only one thing the victim would have written, given the circumstances. It's a murderer's name. Ah. Uh. Now that's already... Alright, stop it. The controls are kind of... Not stated, it's very unclear what exactly you need to do. There we go. It's a defense attorney's duty to prove their client's innocence. And that's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Emma. Emma, you didn't do it. No way. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Yo, she's so fancy, is this the first bag spread with Lana? Oh, you hacker! It was him! It was him! He's a hacker! He's a little hacking dude, a little hacking fella! See, Worthy? Can't I say I didn't wa- Can't say I didn't warn you! Chief Gant! Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in the case, were you not? Ugh! Yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent fuck. Worthy, I'm a little bit drunk, I skipped my words, but an innocent person was something put to death, I assume. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to ensure his conviction. Ugh. Ugh. 
But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know? We aren't defenders of justice. What? We're cops. We don't give a shit. We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Ugh. Despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. I love how evil he is and then how he just goes so polite. What's going on in the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order! 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 Is that the end of this part? That was shorter than the investigation, if so. The gavel's pounding fell on deaf ears. Unable to settle the crowd, the judge declared a recess. Where this trial's headed, no one knows. Alright, last part. I'm so hyped. Sorry, Edgeworth. I was thinking I might do a 15 minute break before this, but it's only been three hours, which is a lot shorter than I thought it would be. I feel like this part's probably going to be about two hours. I'm fine. Sorry, I'm still chewing on that. Strawberry pencil from earlier. I've been slowly eating away at it, which is why I've just been silent at some points. I'm about done now. Still got some in my teeth, but that's about it for that one. Sorry, Edgeworth. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, balls. Oh, I guess I am. I'll come back later. No, I'm not again. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? Did Lana request evidence again? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around while, I'll, while I'm duty. We said it to her this time. And it's up and off you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. We get it. The funny repetition joke. I get it. I take it Lana's having you run errands again. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal. Here, she asked me to give this to you if there is a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Evidence law? Edward was talking about this just the other day. I did think it might be important because it was brought up so randomly. Now we're getting a book on it. Lana's like, yo, you're a fucking dumbass attorney. Here's the book on evidence law. Edward was talking about this just the other day. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Like, this is so random. It must be important. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. We could at least study some evidence law. Really? The chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're gonna need this book. Him? I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. For Miss Guy explains the two rules of evidence law. Why is there a whole book on just two rules? They must be long ass rules. Like, look at how thick that book is. That is at least like. I'm not very good with books, but I think at least like. A hundred pages, I'd say. Maybe less. But right. One second. I have a book behind me. One sec. Right, this book, I think, is slightly bigger by, like, 
not much and it is 300 pages so this is at least 100 pages of two rules that is bs I do currently keep all of my nail polish on that book, so that's why it took a while for me to get it out. <laughs> Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown that the approval of the police department. Rule 2. Unregistered. Like, this is just two... This is one page! This is two... Why is it in a book? That's... I don't get it! Why is it in a book? It's two... It's two... It's not even two pages. It's not even one for each page. Or one, uh, one page for each rule. It's just one page. No evidence shall be shown that the approval of the police department unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. So that's going to come in handy soon. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence. That's where you're wrong, detective. Oh? Haven't you figured it out yet? Why I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me. Mr. Edgeworth. The real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. And this guy turned out she unwittingly caused a man's death. Found out, not turned out. I know you're telling me you'd want to do more! You've got to be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, Detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. Oh! She merely stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're gonna expose him, no matter what it takes. This case has hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Ms. Lana Skye, Mr. Redworth. Yes, Your Honor? The Inquiry Committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor! I love this! Yes, well, ahem. Normally, this is where the prosecution calls forth a witness. But, uh, ahem. <coughs> this isn't easy to say. You see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. Huh? You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that. It's just, you see, everyone has been talking and... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? But there's no precedent for what you're proposing. Undeniably, this is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? Unbelievable. Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Very well, the defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The, uh, defense may now call forth the next witness. Mr. Wright. Huh? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. The defense calls... The time's finally come to bring out the real murderer. Alright, it is Gant. I was about to say, I'm not entirely sure, but I think it's supposed to be Gant, but yeah. Gant. Damon Gant. The defense calls Damon Gant to the stand. D Damon Gant? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Lester Gant has first had knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be here in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? True. All right. Bailiff, please escort Mr. Gant to the stand. I love him. He's a, just a little guy with his little hair. I love him. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. So, 
You want to play hardball, eh? But please, Mr. Gant. Fine. My name is Damon Gant, and I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gant, the court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, right, oh, what's with the grim face? It's almost like this is a murder trial. First, let's clear up the Cecil 9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's sister murdered that prosecutor? Personally, I think it's been made pretty clear already. There are still some things unaccounted for. Oh, like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Son. Papa? Either you're very brave, or very foolish. You are aware, of course, that a police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Is that a threat? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. I plead the fifth! That's what it is, right? I think. Right, oh, please, I plead the fifth. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. I'm glad I made him British. <laughs> Very well, the witness may now begin his testimony. SL9 incident! Oh, my back. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. Ah, This picture actually makes me sad. I don't know how to explain, but it's just like... Maybe... When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Apparently, she'd already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. No one was accusing you of that, sir. What the fuck are you talking about? Hmm? Is that when Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dark bumped his head. I see. Everything seems pretty clear-cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, I'd better hit him hard and fast. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. Fuck! As I recall, a ceremony was held at the police department that day. Yes, that's right. I guess you could say I'm a workaholic. After winning his award, Neil was all fired up too. That's probably what spooked Dark and made him run away like that. Was the defendant, Lana Skye, also present in the room? I don't quite remember. At the very least, she wasn't there when Dark ran for it. To make a long story short, we snipped up. That power outage didn't help either. Fuck! I'm a fucking idiot! I'm a dumbass! A little bitch, maybe! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So, the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Dark made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say, he got lucky. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden, and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil was when that knife went through his heart, though. Why do you keep making jokes? That's not funny. He was like, oh yes, I guess that Neil was lucky. Oh, well, I wasn't as shocked as when the victim died. <laughs> That's not funny. When I went to my office, I found Lana there. Could you tell us what you saw? It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor. Yes, apparently he hit his head and was knocked out. Next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms, in her arms. Looking back at it now, 
She must have already known what her sister had done. Ugh. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk. That's right. Oh, I gotta present the vase when he's like, I had nothing to do with the forgery because he had a... Right. I think you said earlier. It was my suit of armor. That really stabbed the prosecutor. Yes. Anyway... As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. I actually did think that I'd have to, like, get something by pressing him. And then, you know, get a new statement or something. I thought he'd be a bit... But I guess this isn't, um... This isn't, like, a slip in his testimony. This is just, like, we already know that he is a little hacker, man. So you're saying that the forgery had already taken place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying. I can understand how Lana must have felt. But moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. Ugh. If you're going to stare at anything, you'd better you'd be better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy, always the smooth talker. But which piece of evidence ties get to the forgery? Ugh, Lana did admit to pointing evidence, but that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link Gant to the incident. Alright, yeah, it's gotta be on the jar. I didn't call it a vase, but they, they keep just calling it a jar, so. You claim you had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that's a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. That's that blue badger you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gant? These articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you also played a part in the, in the illegal investigation. Chief Gant, what's the meaning of this? Oh. Here's a defense attorney who may even rival Worthy! So, you admit to it then, that you're involved with in the forgery. Who, me? Or do you mean, you? Me? Why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who snuck into my office when you found this evidence. Ugh. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, Righto? Funny reference, I'll understand it in a few years. However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. And I said Dick on purpose, I might add. <sighs> what? If Detective Gumshoe's salary drops any further, he'll end up paying to work. Phoenix. He's been fired already, what do you mean? Right? He already got fired. Yes, well, in light of the detective's pres presence, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office, and their relation to the forgery that took place at the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put two and two together. I wonder what's going to happen with Gumshoe, because obviously he doesn't remain fired, right? Because... Thank you, this was a case that was added after the initial trilogy. So I do wonder what happened to uh what happens at the end of this to make it so that Gumshoe gets his job back. Cause that he he did get fired, right? Am I going crazy? Gan was like, oh yeah, hand in your uh ID, your I'm I'm letting you go. Right? Maybe I'm just making that up, I don't know. Let's see, what was it now? A jar fragment and a list. For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help you out in any way.
It was in your office. It was in your office, my dear fellow. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. When investigating the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I'm ch the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Oh, indeed. I believe I will press charges, so you won't make the same same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, well, you know. All right, Haji. In return, though, I know, I know that place, right? Oh my God, maybe, maybe he is gonna top the judge. Oh my goodness. Huh? What are these guys? What are these guys? Tele, tele. Fuck. What's? Telepathic? No, fuck. That's not right. Fuck. I know this word. Fuck. Telepathic. 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 Huh? What are these guys? Telepathic? For all I know, you could have planted them in my office. Fuck! I keep doing that. <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allegations. Phoenix, you're falling into his trap. Don't do it. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. Oh my goodness, never mind. He's just gonna make fun of you. He's just a bully. What? I'll have you know, back in the day, I once broke into a cattle ranch and tip... Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry in the evidence card, can you? If you have proof to the contrary, you're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Raito's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Gah, I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. What do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean, but Phoenix? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. If concealing evidence found in the crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Raito. He's already said what he means, Phoenix, you dumbass. He's already said if it was... if I put them there after... after the whole thing was all, already over... That would be forging evidence, that would just be something that was... that was not discovered yet, that was then discovered. I'm not through speaking yet, Raito. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Dark was sentenced. Convenient? Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. Huh? The Chief is talking about a possibility, so long as you can't rule that out, your remarks, however clever they may be, will only succeed in wasting time. Tell me something I don't know. Come now, Raito! Think about it. There's no reason I'd participate in a forgery. How can you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. Remember? Who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here, but in the end, the person responsible for Mr. Marshall's unfortunate demise was Emma Sky. Well, now do you see? Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. Really, Chief Gan? At the very least, there is one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh, I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh. The resolution of the SL9 incident secured your promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? What do you mean? 
Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes, he was going to be made chief anyway. Gah! Be careful when pointing that finger, or you might wind up being the one who pointed at. So that means... There's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There, it is out in the open now. Aji, would you mind if I changed my testimony a little? By all means, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. But there was, oh my god, you hacking blank, bl blank, blackmailed uh, uh, Lana so that you could hack, you can have someone in, in the chief of prosecutors. Nothing in it for you. Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, Lana's little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Yes, we've already been told by... Marshall? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? True, you might not help out for any... For, help, d d scared mans, you might not help out anyone for their sake. But if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright, it appears you're positively determined to betray the chief, as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand. That's not what I mean. Very well, then. Who is this person you believe Chief Gant may have helped forge evidence? I swear, why is the list of people every time they have to present something so small? I swear that it's like a different list than... One second, let me just like... Do you have Prosecutor Lana Sky? The defendant? Yeah, it's like a different list. They like rearranged everything. I don't know why, but... I mean, it's handy. I guess it's because it's only the people in the SL9 incident. That's probably why. Wait, no, because wasn't Meekins on it? Oh well. The defendant? I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. And Miss Sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gant, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is... Self-profit. Self-profit? What do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Lana Sky was appointed chief prosecutor at the prosecutor's office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gant. But, but how would he profit from all of this? He would be able to use the chief prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire unchecked authority over all investigations. Do you mean to tell me that despite the chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Oh, wait! You must mean Poppet isn't someone forced to do his bidding. Uh, never mind. Admit it, Chief. You assisted Lana Sky in forging evidence. Your motive? To appoint her as Chief Prosecutor so you could control her. Right, oh my boy. You have quite an imagination. Let me ask you something. What? Do you have any proof of this? That I controlled Lana? For example, is Lana testifying that I've done such a thing? Lana... She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she'd testify against Gant. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture. Unless... That is also what happened in this incident. This incident? Uh, which one would that be? Of course I'm talking about... The murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting straight throughout this entire trial. Almost as if someone's been controlling her. 
worthy. You'd better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? Are you threatening him? What he means, Your Honor, is the Chief Gan is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Oh no, he wasn't even talking about what do you mean Gan. He was talking about what do you mean Edgeworth. Like, bro, I... This man's been threatening, been threatening Edgeworth a lot. <laughs> As the Chief Gen is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, but the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his, his involvement. What? 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 He's such a polite little boy. I love Gan. Put his hands behind his back. I did not do anything. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, you, you can't be serious! Huh? This, this is an affront to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! To accuse the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's in, in, impossible! Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. I speak very partially because I'm British. It's too late, Mr. Wright. Huh? There's no turning back for us now. It looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief, the high-ranking officer of the law, is involved in this murder. Ooh, is it the... Ah, that's... <laughs> I'm assuming it's just that. Good question. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gant is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. I see. Alright then, let's see what Mr. Wright's got. And it had better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gant to the murder of Detective Goodman. Oh heck, it was that. Please. Yeah. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. There was one ID on the list we couldn't determine the, the owner of yesterday. 77777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. What? How do you know that? A safe in Chief Gant's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean... I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 77777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gant, you entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. Oh my god, I love this sprite. Oh, he looks so cool. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love him so much. Order, order. Chief Gant, what do you have to say? <laughs> Nothing. An offensive search of my office was in violation of regulations. And I will demand Mr. Wright be punished to, to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. <sighs> oh, I love that spray. Oh my god. Chief Gant, so you admit it. You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime. What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom. What's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you entered the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief Gan... I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? This trial's purpose is to determine Lana Sky's guilt. No, it isn't, Your Honor. This trial's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Gant met the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. What transpired during that meeting? In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gant on the day of the crime. Ding, 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 ding. Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. 
or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out the Lost Item report. He would have to... He would have to... He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet you're in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he fil filed it. He filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needed to enter the evidence room that day. He needed to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh! Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gant. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman could have entered the room. I love this. Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the Chief of Police, murdered Paul Goodman. Exactly. But wait. The Chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes. Now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you'd really lent it to Detective Goodman... It would have been found on his body. <laughs> oh my god! I guess that's the outside. She might want to come in, one second. Oh my god, that was so... Zazu, you can't sit there. I have to stream. I have to stream, baby. Good girl. She's chilling on my bed now. What are you doing? You trying to eat that, you hacker? Sorry, I'm just... I'm too focused on Zazu now. She might want to leave, actually. Alright, one second. I'll let her go again. She just wanted to sit on my chair, and when I moved her to the bed, she was like, Nope, I'm out of here. Chief Gant, you didn't! The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime, for no one in the right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. After the murder, he contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office parking lot. Whoa, I wonder how that could have happened. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed with, at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. Everyone except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey you, take this here dead body over to the prosecutor's office. I don't think so. Chief Gant, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. The screwdriver! How could he have- I clicked accidentally, but how could he have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence! To move the victim's body, Chief Gant used this. Use the screwdriver! <laughs> Use the screwdriver. This is how he moved Detective Goodman's body. What's that? A screwdriver? But what does that have to do with this case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is this screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Uh, ah! I was asked to go, by Chief Gant, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did, because Chief Gan asked you to. You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. 
I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car. So that was close. Edgeworth wasn't being framed necessarily, but... You know... Detective Goodman's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car! Yes, unless of course you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transport evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transport the body to your accomplice, Ms. Lana Skye. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for a bottle to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Star took at the prosecutor's office. This was a not a f this was a not a photo. This was a not a photo. This was not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gant, please say something. I believe. Your time's up. My time's up. Sorry, Ryder, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. Attorney General? Uh, DGS? Uh. <laughs> but the cross-examination isn't finished yet. Remember what I told you earlier? A police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like a dog? And a metal detector? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? This, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had Lana dispose of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Damon Gant is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any ac accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Your Honor. Do you have any concrete proof? Proof that Chief Gant murdered Detective Goodman and made Ms. Sky dispose of his body. Do I have any concrete proof? Um, I actually don't know. Oh, did... I don't know if Lana admitted to it on record, but she did say that... I actually don't know. Heck. I don't want to watch it again, no. Please. Oh! Is there something about... The fingerprints with the glove, maybe? Probably not. I actually don't know. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Is it the fun? I'm gonna try the fun. I can't let him just squirm his way out of this. I've got to keep the pressure on. Yes, Your Honor, I do have such evidence. And please hurry up and present it. Just remember, it better prove Chief Gant murdered, de murdered Detective Goodman without a beyond a shadow of a doubt. Alright, so that's what we're presenting. Something that proves that he murdered Detective Goodman without a shadow of a doubt. Could maybe be that... Alright, let's try the fun first of all, because that's what I originally thought, because it's... So, uh, what exactly is this evidence? It's proof as to whether or not it's enough to demonstrate the Chief's guilt. I'll let you be the judge. But I am the judge. Alright. Well, what do you think, Your Honor? What I think, Mr. Wright, is I'm going to be late for lunch. I guess it wasn't enough. Please, Your Honor, give me just a little longer to consider. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. Alright, so it does put me back there. That makes me think maybe I have to say no proof. Maybe. 
Why can I not skip this text? There we go. Um. The bad blammo. I'm a fucking idiot. Dumbass. I have proof. Well, golly. Let's just try this for a moment. Because if it's wrong, then I'll just be like, Damn. It's no use showing evidence, I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor, at present, I have no conclusive evidence. <laughs> See, Angie? In that case, this court is forced to penalize you for your allegations against the Chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Righto. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, Angie, I'll leave the rest to you. Like, I can't tell if this is all scripted or not. So I might as well just check this rather than go through all of the evidence. Like, worst case scenario, I lose and then I reload. Fuck, I think I lost. I warned you earlier, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a senior officer on our nation's law enforcement agency. Whoa! Okay, it is scripted. Oh, thank you, Edgeworth. Lady Luck, hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. A lady who knows the truth. Another witness. In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gann has invoked his right to refuse to testify. I'm also a dumbass. <laughs> There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions. Raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Redworth, who is this person? Hm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the only one calling witnesses today. Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls forth. Oh, fuck. Oh, wait, I'll get penalized. Oh, I don't care. Mike Meekins! I thought we were walking the same path together, Mr. Wright. It appears somewhere along the way you got lost. <laughs> You'd better find your way back, Mr. Wright, or you'll be left behind. Who's another witness who can expose Chief Gant's crime? One whom we've all da ba da ba ba ba. <laughs> now that I think about it, there's only one possible witness. <laughs> the defendant? Ms. Lana Sky? She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15pm on February 21st. Her task? To dispose of the victim's body. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well. The court will now take its final recess for the day. In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony. This court is now in re- Hold on. Huh? Chief Gant! I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana. He's talking to Lana. I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Huh? That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ugh, this isn't good. Uh, you're on a very clear blackmail right here. Very, very clear blackmail. Of course, you never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. Alright then. I've got a lunch date to meet. I'll be topping him too. I'm not the only one. Uh, uh, okay, if there aren't any further objections. This court is now in recess. Wait, is this another... No. It's the same part. It looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks to your help, Edgeworth. Hey, uh, Paul. That chief, he's something else, eh, Pauls? Detective Gumshoe. Haha, <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, he was fired. Uh, don't worry, I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top-knotted girl you used to work with. Oh my god, Gumshoe could be the weird girl. 
Could he mean Maya? Gumshu, we are girl lag, let's heck and go. Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief Gun's done it again. How is it, how is it, he's always gets the upper hand. It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. Hm. Settle down, right. Remember what the judge said. But Chief, that is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Risks? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. Emma? You mean he forfeits his right to say anything too? Emma! Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So, she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah. Now I finally know what really happened. I think that all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by that terrible man. And she did it all, just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? Uh, that was not my voice, Paul. What do you mean? What do you think I mean? To follow Chief Gant's orders. She must have shut herself up deep inside to force herself to do anything and everything the Chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I... I murdered Mr. Marshall. I don't believe that for a second. Gant did it. He's a... he's a bad man. He's a little bad man. I love him, but he's a little, he's a little bad man. Hey, don't go blaming yourself now. If you don't want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Best? Chief Gant may be able to fool everyone else with, with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, never mind. I don't believe you anymore, Emma. I mean, I do believe you, but for the opposite thing, I believe that you mur murdered Marshall. But oh well. It's all fine. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act, pal. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm gonna... I'm going with you. Huh? I wanna be there. When Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. To be continued? What? <laughs> it is another part? Damn. Makes sense, I guess. I just wasn't expecting it. Because it was already... Yeah, it was Trial Latter, so... What's this? Trial Latter Latter? Trial Latter 2! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> trial Latter Latter. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Trial former, trial latter, trial latter two, you know? <laughs> that, that's just how it goes. Now then. Will the defendant, Ms. Lana Sky, please take the stand? I swear if there's a trial latter three. <laughs> Ms. Lana Sky, you are the chief prosecutor. I'm sure you're aware of what is required of you. But Mr. Edgeworth, you already know everything. You know all that I've done these past two years. Please provide the court with your testimony, Miss Skye. And remember, you are under oath. We want to hear the truth. Of course. The truth. Lana, no matter what happens, I'll always be your sister. Aww. Now then, your testimony, if you will. First, tell us about your relationship with Chief Gant. Everything hinges on your testimony. You're the only chance we have to get Gant. Lana, please. Gant's in the fabrication. I worked alongside Gant for years. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. Shaw. Shaw, yeah. Hmm, are you sure about this testimony? Your Honor, I'm confessing to a capital offense. Of course I'm sure. But Lana! If this is true, then that means Chief Gant has nothing to do with this. That's what I've been telling you from the beginning. Please, Mr. Wright, you've gotta help her. She's sacrificing herself because of me. 
But what if she's telling the truth? Shut up, Phoenix. She's not. I know my own sister. Whenever she speaks stiffly like that, she's hiding something inside. It's time for your bracelet, Mr. Wright. Deep down, she's really screaming in agony. Huh? Yeah, this is no time for time to start second-guessing myself. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Gans in the fabrication. When I first saw that, I didn't mention it, but I thought that it was a different word, fabrication, because I saw fabric, and I didn't, I didn't realize what it meant until, until I read it out loud. <laughs> I worked alongside Gan for years. How many years exactly? Ever since I made senior detective. Let's see, I was 24 then, so that would be five years. Detective Gant and Detective Sky were legendary partners. I personally saw them testify in numerous cases. She must have been good coming from the same school as Mia. Damon Gant was a respectable, de a respectable detective. That's why. There's no truth to this blackmail theory. But think about it, Miss Sky. You didn't murder Detective Goodman. He told me as much yesterday in jail. You still don't get it, do you, Mr. Wright? Any testimony you cannot present in court is as useless as idle gossip. I stabbed Detective Goodman with a knife. And... I fabricated the evidence two years ago all by myself. Did you do so to help your sister? Joe Dark was a serial killer. My sister almost became his last victim that day. I didn't want that incident to ruin her life. But what she did was justifiable self-defense. Self she wouldn't have been charged with anything. That's not the point. She was traumatized that day, all because of that creep. That's why I couldn't forgive him. Lana... So that's why you fabricated the evidence two years ago. When I found Prosecutor Marshall's body, I rearranged the crime scene. You say you did this all by yourself. Yes. Would you mind telling us what you found when you arrived at the crime scene? It seems I was the first person to discover the scene. The broken prosecutor award knife was stuck in the victim's body. What? I don't know why they showed that picture, because that was not what that was. <laughs> But Prosecutor Marshall died from an unfortunate accident. That's only a situation you dreamed was possible. Huh? The reality is, it was my sister who took the prosecutor's life. Fantasize all you want, Mr. Wright, but I'll never change this statement. You mean, Prosecutor Marshall wound up being killed by Doc? Something like that. If that is so, what happened to the other murder weapon? Doc was carrying a switchblade knife. Oh, that was lying on the floor a little distance away. It was probably knocked away in the struggle. That's not how it went down. She was trying to cover up her lies with more lies. All just to protect me. So, when you found the scene like this, what did you do? After all, this is what everything boils down to. Yes. I broke off the tip of Dark's knife, planted it inside the wound, and then moved the body. You planted the tip of Dark's knife in the victim's wound, and then you moved the body? But why? Why would you do that? You of all people should know, Edgeworth. You've always had a good head on your shoulders. Ugh. My head is not, isn't that bad, but maybe I ought to ask for the sake of others. <laughs> uh, why'd you plant the knife? Why'd you move the body? The body, I am curious. The knife, it's obvious. I'm like, that's already been discussed so many times. When you showed up on the scene, where exactly was the victim's body? It was where you deduced it was, by Chief Gant's desk. But the body was found by your desk. Why did you move it there? The reason for that is simple. Let's have the witness explain that in more detail. The reason this guy moved the body. The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events threatened my plan. There? Pieces of the jar? You mean... Yes, that wretched jar you showed us earlier. In order to show that Dark committed the crime, I felt it would be more ex... 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 Bet, ex, ex I don't give enough of a shit to try to pronounce this word. 
expedient to move the body. So, when you first found the body, the jaw was already. Of course, it had been shattered to pieces. If you looked at the crime scene, it would be clear right away what happened. Neil Marshall was dead, and Dark was lying unconscious. In other words, the jar must have been broken during the struggle. I see. What's the matter, Emma? Apparently the jar shattered at the time the crime was committed. But I have a feeling there's more to it than that. There must be a contradiction here somewhere. Anyway, I committed this fabrication completely alone. My only motivation was to get Dark convicted. It had nothing to do with Emma. So, you rearranged the crime scene. Are you sure you didn't do this to just to, uh, are you, uh, 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 are you sure you didn't do this to keep Emma from looking like the murderer? How many times do I have to tell you, Mr. Ride? Emma didn't do it. Period. Are you so desperate to hide that fact? You're willing to risk the death sentence? She's lying. She did, she did it so I wouldn't be blamed for what happened. In any case, as a prosecutor, what I've done is unpardonable. There's nothing I can do to make up for my actions. Mr. Wright, my sister's lying! Looks like she's determined to protect you to the end. She insists she fabricated the evidence by herself. There's no way she could have done it alone. I've got to get Lana to talk more. If she's lying, then she's bound to slip up and make a contradiction. Alright, so... Heck, it has to be this. The pieces of the jar that shattered during my... During the events, threatened my plan. Dun 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 dun. I don't know. Maybe I do just present the jar. I'll try that. Heck. Heck. It was over here. <laughs> it is. Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. I assumed that it was just because Emma's written on it. So Lana trying to prove so desperately that it can't have been Emma is like... Well, there's just... There's just no, like... Oh, right, it couldn't have already been shattered because thingy. Something was written on it. Miss Sky, I understand how you feel. You committed that crime two years ago to protect your sister. You mean the photo at the scene where Neil Marshall was murdered? If that truth were to be exposed now, the past two years of your life will have been in vain. Even so, I am compelled to bring to everyone's attention a significant contradiction within your testimony. A contradiction? In my testimony? You testified, and I quote, The pieces of the jar that shattered during the events that threatened my plan. That's right. Do you have a problem with that? It's a simple oversight, really. You see, a message was written on this jar with the victim's blood. Yes, the prosecutor must have written it in his final moments. I- but it was- you are claiming it was shattered! Exactly so, and this is where the contradiction lies. Ugh! In order for the victim to be able to write his message on the jar, it must not have yet have been broken before he died. Ugh! He couldn't have written down his name in the shattered jar. Oh, her hand! Order! Order! Your Honor, it would appear more information is needed in regard to this jar and its bloody message. Yeah, get it? Bloody, because I'm British. We may be missing something critical here. Something critical? There, there is like a, a handle that looks like it's missing. I feel like that's important somehow, but I don't see how it would be. But it looks like there should be another handle here. Chief Prosecutor, it seems you're as in... It seems you're as in the dark as we are about the truth towards which we're headed. What? Just tell us exactly what you saw. We'll piece together the information to arrive at the truth. Very well. The witness may now continue her testimony. I think that was just dot dot dots. Jar and message in blood. Ah, my back. Ooh, golly. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. But it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. 
All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. You mean you were the one who wiped away the message in blood? I wasn't chief prosecutor at the time. She didn't think Dark was the real murderer. That's why she tried to erase the real evidence. Very well. The defense may not begin its cross-examination. I immediately noticed the blood traces on the jar. So, the jar was already broken. I think I just have to present the jar again in the second statement. It's a miracle that thing hadn't broken earlier. It certainly looks as feeble as the defense's case. Um, <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> but not as feeble as the judge's judgment. You were an ace detective who never missed a detail. Do you really expect us to believe you didn't investigate what was written on the jar pieces? Normally I would've. But it was dark in the room, and I didn't have time to check it out. Sorry, the third statement. So you didn't know your sister's name was written on the jar? No, if I had known, I would have gathered all the pieces and ground them to dust. Well, that helps my case. Lana, you'd do that for me? It seems you two might make up yet. Anyway, I just barely had enough time to move the body as it was. If someone happened upon the scene, you'd lose your chance to erase the evidence. You must have been in a hurry. I was. I knew I had to destroy the evidence before anyone came. This is rather shocking. To be safe, I wiped away the blood. Sorry, the bot statement. I missed so many. I just wasn't paying attention, I guess. The one where she says I'm sure that I got them all. That's the one that I think I have to present this uh, jar on. I'm afraid this action of yours reveals what really happened. What do you mean? If you really thought Dark killed Prosecutor Marshall, he wouldn't have wiped away the blood. What else could I have done in that situation? Lana! I only had a few moments. There wasn't enough time for me to do anything else but gather up the pieces. The fragments were large, so I'm sure I got them all. But how could you see with the power out? It should have been pitch black in that office. A detective is always prepared, Mr. Wright. Even now I always carry a pocket light and a camera with me. Even I carry a bottle of emergency luminol wherever I go. I never miss anything. I got every last piece. All I could think about was wiping them clean before they were discovered. So, you will legally re rearrange the crime scene. Yes, I don't have any excuse for my actions. I'm so sorry, Lana. I didn't know. I've treated you so badly all this time. It's not too late. There's still plenty of time to make up. After we've gotten to the bottom of this incident. No doubt this day will leave a permanent stain on the history of the prosecutor's office. More contradictions have surfaced in her testimony. Your sister's really putting up a fight. She must really care about you. Still, she's not doing this the right way. Uh-huh. I think I finally figured out the contradictions in, contradictions in her testimony. There's one final possibility that might turn everything around. Fairly certain this is where I present the jar again. But maybe not. Yeah, it is that simple. In the sky, I believe this jar conceals a truth even you are unaware of. What? We found the final piece of this jar in Chief Gant's safe. In the Chief's safe? But how? I knew it. She really didn't know. There's something even more disturbing about that final piece. There was... Still blood on it. But the witness just testified that she gathered every last piece and wiped the blood off of them. Yes, which leaves us with only one explanation. Gan got that before her! On the night Prosecutor Marshall was murdered, you were not the first one to show up on the scene. Chief Gan got there before you. Heck yeah! Dun 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 But couldn't the defendant have simply missed a piece? I'm afraid that's unlikely. The pieces are too big for anyone to miss, let alone an ace detective. That may well be, but... Everyone makes mistakes. Even I once wasted an entire day looking for my dentures. They were in my mouth all along. Ha! Can you believe that? I really can. Have you forgotten, Your Honor? You're a fucking idiot, and she is an ace detective. When this witness arrived at the scene, the job was already broken. Oh, that. There's no way a name could have been written on a shattered jar. 
Another person discovered the scene prior to the witness. I hope you're not implying this person was Chief Gant. At the time, he was looking for Dark downstairs. Besides, even if he was there first, why would he break the jar? The question is, if he did arrive there first, why did he hide that fact for two years? I don't know why my lips keep moving! Well, Your Honor, can you answer us that? Mm -hmm. ah! No! Wait, I'm not the one on trial here. Damon Gant arrived at the crime scene prior to the witness. The judge just wanted his own classic Ace Attorney breakdown, I can understand it. He proceeded to break the jar and purposefully hid one of the broken pieces. Question, what is this action called? Fabrication of evidence. But, but why would Chief Gant do that? In light of what happened afterwards, isn't it clear? What happened afterwards? Discovering this scene, Lana Sky believed her sister Emma killed the victim. Determined to help her sister, she sought Gant's aid. Lending her his aid, Gant helped her create evidence that incriminated Dark. Sparing Emma. And therein lies the reason. The reason why Miss Sky became the Chief's puppet. Oh my goodness! No! I did it on my own! Oh my goodness, blood and hacking squirted out of her thumb! That was holy shit! Please, sis, stop trying to protect the chief. I... I can't watch you suffer anymore for my sake. No, you didn't. It wasn't you, Emma. You didn't kill anyone. Don't believe anything Mr. Wright says. Defense attorneys make up the most foul lies to defend their clients. Foul lies? Imagine that coming from my own client. Hmm, I guess you do seem the type who likes to twist the truth. What the fuck? This judge is... What the fuck? Wait a minute. What if? We're still smack dab in the middle of Gant's trap. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Lana may be right after all. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? So you do tell foul lies then, Mr. Wright? Miss Skye, please testify once more. But... If evidence was fabricated behind your back, then Emma's accidental killing of Prosecutor Marshall might also be a lie. But... I do remember knocking over Mr. Marshall. Miss Skye, if you will. I... I can't. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. Huh? This cross-examination may not change a thing. However, there is a possibility that it will, if you tell the truth. Very well. I'll testify about what I really saw. All right, the witness may testify once more. For the fi final time, I had a hiccup. All of us get hiccups. It's not just because I'm a bumbling buffoon. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor's sword. Emma and Dark were lying unconscious on the floor nearby. When I saw what had happened, I thought she did it. That's why I erased all the evidence that linked her to the murder. I had Chief Gant help me remove the body from the sword and carry it. But if it already was a fabrication, Emma might be innocent. Unbelievable! The body was impaled on the armor's sword! You were the only one who saw that. If only you had proof. Actually, I do have proof. Huh? Did she take a picture? I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. Evidence law book? What? This mon- that would be- Bleh? Bleh? What do you mean? I gave it to Mr. Wright just this morning. What? To me? It's a picture I took of the crime scene as I encountered it. I thought it might be needed. But I don't remember receiving a picture like that. Lana must have known. See, Mr. Wright? She really does have faith in you. Very well, Mr. Wright. Please present this picture. Is it? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. Huh? 
What do you mean? Is it is is it in here? I don't remember receiving any pictures from Lana. Well, Lana said she gave it to you this morning, right? I seem to remember getting something from her then. Let's check that evidence again. There must be a picture in there somewhere. Uh. Oh, I can actually examine it now. It must be then. Here. Oh, I'd... Well, that certainly is, um... Hey, there's a picture here. Oh my god. Fucking absolute queen, Lana. Absolute queen. Oh, oh my. Oh no, don't show it to Emma. No, don't show it to Emma. This is the actual crime scene. No other detective saw the crime scene like this. Because I contacted Criminal Affairs only after I'd arranged everything. Crime scene photo taken from the case two years ago. Taken. <gasps> Mr. Wright! That piece cut out from his vest. Could that be... Oh. Wait, is... Is that, is that what... The, the, is that what this is? Because it's leather, right? I assume this is leather. That piece cut out... Oh! Because Emma pushed... Neil. So... Oh, that's why her handprint was there. Oh! That piece cut out from his vest. Could that be... The cloth we found inside Chief Gant's safe. What's this? And this is a handprint, isn't it? That cloth had yeah, that fingerprints on it. These ever fingerprints those are are must be the real murderer. What? But those fingerprints. No, we already know that Emma pushed Marshall. And it's just that his body was then put onto the sword. But those fingerprints. They're yours, Emma. Why are your lips turning all purple, Mr. Wright? Anyway, let's get on with the cross examination. So long as you tell the truth, we should be able to flush out the real murderer. Very well. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. Actual crime scene. When I arrived, I found Mr. Marshall's body impaled on that suit of armor- Hold it! I thought it was Gan. Come now, Wadji. This is the poorest excuse for a trial I've ever seen! That was actually shocking. That was- that was really cool, I wasn't expecting that. Chief Gant? What, now you want me- now you want to make me out as the bad guy too? If so, I'd like to put in a word or two in my defense. I'm afraid it's too late for that. What? You already declined to testify. Ooh, little bitch man, little fucking idiot, little dumbass. That means you've forfeited your right to make statements of any sort. Little, little, little dumbass, little idiot man, little baby man. This must be that risk we were talking about earlier. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the sound of the noose tight tightening around your ne own neck. <laughs> ah. So what? You think I'm worried? Huh? Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't need to make any statements. What do you mean? The evidence will do all the talking for me. Even if I can't testify, I can still present evidence. Yes, that's true. Wait, you mean you still have some conclusive evidence? No, I don't. But someone does. Someone? So, what's your excuse, Righto? Ugh. Why have you been keeping quiet about it? You do have something to show us, right? Something that proves who knocked over Neil Marshall, causing his death. Conclusive evidence that leaves no room for doubt. I is this true, Mr. Wright? I'm just an incompetent lawyer, I don't know what you're talking about. If I show that piece of evidence now, I'm sure to be made out as the murderer. Mr. Wright, if you have any more evidence, present it now. And if you try to conceal anything, you will be the one appearing before the Board of Inquiries. What do I do now? I'd better think this through carefully. I can't afford to make a wrong decision. Should I present that piece of evidence? The one that shows who really killed Prosecutor Marshall. 
Um, oh golly gee, Kazuma. Kazuma, Kazuma. Kazuma, oh golly, oh golly Kazuma, oh golly, J oh golly gee. Um, I'll show it. Yes, Your Honor, I do have further evidence. All right, the time's finally come to show it to them. Those prints have got to be the chiefs. Now then, let's see the co this conclusive evidence. Ah, uh, my fucking throat. The evidence that shows who actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. I'm defense attorney. <laughs> yeah, Emma, sorry. Whoopsie. It's a piece of leather cloth. Yes, it most likely was cut from the victim's vest, near his chest. Paris? What's this? There's a big handprint on it. Surely it must have been left on the cloth by whoever shoved the victim into the sword. What? Whose fingerprints are on this? Whose fingerprints are on this? I'm sure Raito's checked, haven't you? Ugh. Well, whose are they? They're Miss Skies. Miss Emma Skies. What? They're mine? So I really did do it. See? I told you it was conclusive. But this was found in your safe. That means it's possible you forged it. I don't know what you're talking about. Huh? I don't remember any cloth in my safe. Do you really expect me to believe that? But... Give it up, Mr. Wright. It's over. Ugh. You shouldn't have presented that. By presenting that evidence, you tied Emma Sky to Neil Marshall's death. No. It appears we have our killer. No! No! I'm a fucking dumbass. Whoopsie. Everything hinged on that point. In the end, Lana alone was found guilty on all counts. Well, we got the... We got the bad ending, that's nice. That's cool. That's awesome. At least I saved. <laughs> oh, golly. Dun 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 dun. I can't show it, Your Honor. I don't I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any evidence. Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. What? You lie! Chief Gant. You you opened my safe. I know you took what was inside. She just washed her hands and the person who won the cloth off, off offered it to her. Exactly! Marshall cut that out of his own jacket and gave it to Emma like, hey girl. <laughs> the conclusive evidence. I don't have it. I don't know what you- I, <laughs> I was literally about to say, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't have any evidence. What, 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 do, we, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, that's so fucking dumb. Mr. Wright, why don't you show it them? We found it together. Oh, I see. It's because you know the truth, don't you? You know his fingerprints are on it. That's why you won't present it. What are you talking about, Chief Gant? Can't you figure it out? Take a good look at this photograph. Every time I do it makes me laugh. See the victim's vest? Notice anything odd about the chest area? It looks like part of it's been cut out for some reason. You mean, you had this in your safe? Oh, he admits it himself. He's a fucking dumbass. He's a fucking dumbass. Oh, that's why. That means you, the chief of police, have been concealing evidence. This is going to be the biggest scandal in the history of the police department. He's a fucking idiot. Impressive. To be honest, I didn't think you had the goal right here. Huh? Well... I can't just let you pin me up as the murderer. I'll tell you what really happened. What? You mean, you admit to it? <laughs> you opened my safe, you took what's inside it. Nuh uh. Your Honor. Nuh uh. I was the first person to arrive at the crime scene that day. It then occurred to me that I could use this situation to control Lana. So, you really were manipulating her? I knew Lana. If I made it look like the blame lay with her sister, 
that when she saw the scene, she would ask me for my, my aid. So you assisted Miss Skye. I told her to arrange all the evidence. I had her plant the knife tip in the victim's body and move the body across the room. And I ended up using that evidence to get you dark convicted. When I tampered with the crime scene, I hid two pieces of evidence. This was before Lana arrived at the scene, mind you. Two pieces of evidence? You mean those items in your safe? But why? For insurance, of course. Insurance? I was sure my plan would work, but it's always best to be prepared for the worst. I wasn't about to let anyone blame me for a murder that girl committed. You mean, you were calculating that far ahead while forging the evidence? What do you take me for, a fool? I didn't make police cheap by dumb luck. See this jar fragment? I hit the most legible part of Emma's name. I didn't expect Lana to go and wipe the blood off all the pieces. But if you fabricated all the evidence, what's to say you didn't fabricate the message on this jar too? <laughs> Some people just don't know when to quit, do they? That's why I kept one more item for insurance. You mean that piece of cloth? We already know that Emma pushed him. That is undeniable. We don't know that she pushed him onto the sword. That's just that's just something that we assumed. You could have easily put him on the sword. He could have been knocked out, and then when you arrived there, you stabbed him with the sword. You mean the piece of cloth? Come on, Raito. Cop it up already. I know you have it. What are you waiting for, Mr. Wright? So, you admit to it then, Chief Gant, that you were hiding the cloth you cut off the victim's vest in your safe. Yes, I admit it. I didn't want to have to do that, being Chief and all. But it's a lot better than being portrayed as a murderer. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say for yourself? Just a moment ago, you said you didn't have any evidence you could present. Foolish move, Righto. You should have shown it then before it was too late. I, I did. <laughs> I, I did. It's been a long battle. But the moment of truth has finally arrived. As long as I don't mess up here, victory is mine. I assume... Do I show it now? That's what they want me to think, but I can't show it again. No, it's too late to show the evidence now. Besides, even if I did, it'd just expose that poor girl's fingerprints. Right, think hard over the circumstances. The circumstances? I'm talking about then and now. There's one major difference between the two. Weren't you waiting for that difference? Huh? So, Edward figured out my plan. <laughs> Alright, that time I, I did know that I have to present it now, but, you know funny. Oh, the evidence that shows you actually murdered Prosecutor Marshall. There you go. No point in reloading, I've only got two thingies. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh, yes. At last, you finally brought it out into the open. There's a handprint on this piece of cloth. Your Honor, the prosecution requests that be immediately sent to the lab for analysis. <laughs> This handprint on the leather. There must have been a strong impact for it to be left so clearly. You mean... It could not have been forged. It must be authentic, conclusive evidence. Ha 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 ha! You're as slow on the uptake as ever, Worthy. What? Think about it. Right, you had all this time to present this evidence. Yet he was reluctant to do so. Why would that be? Ugh. You mean you already know? You know whose fingerprints are on that. Mr. Wright, do you really know? Whoever the fingerprints belong to must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Very well. I'll tell you. Again. It should be okay now. Everything's proceeding as predicted. The person to whom these fingerprints belong to is... Mike Meekins. No, it's no use lying here. They'll discover the truth the second they analyze this. What's the matter, Raito? Hurry up and tell us. <laughs> the fingerprints belong to your mom. <laughs> Got him. You do know, don't you, Mr. Wright? Well, the fingerprints belong to you. Must be the real murderer. Whose fingerprints are they? Yeah, I already know. I already know. I already know. Very well, I'll tell you. I already know. It's it's all. It should be okay now. 
I just want to be silly. I'm doing. I'm being silly and goofy, okay? I got like three more, three more silliness points left, and then I'll die. <laughs> Emma, Emma Sky, what? They're mine. I'm sorry, Emma. But why? Why didn't you tell me? Oh my god, front-facing sp sprite while she's in the... Acting... Behind the bench, that's crazy. <laughs> You're really something, Raito. You knew this girl did it all along. And you still tried to pin the murder on me. So it's true. Tragic, but true. This girl really did shove Prosecutor Marshall to his death. Hold it! How could you? You... You monster! Miss Sky. You knew whose fingerprints those were all along, yet you... You acted like she really didn't. Miss Sky, it's not over yet. What? I said this trial isn't over yet. <laughs> but I'm afraid it is over, boy! Not only this trial, but your career too! You purposefully concealed this conclusive evidence. That, my friend, is a serious offense. I'm looking forward to pressing charges after the defendant is convicted. I'll have your badge, boy! What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Or are you still in a holiday kind of mood? Aren't you going to tell us how it feels? How it feels to be the one who single-handedly turned a poor little girl into a murderer. Before I do that... There's just one little thing I have to clear up. Oh, and what's that? Who really killed Prosecutor Neil Marshall? What? Chief Gant, you're absolutely right. This piece of cloth proves who the real murderer is. Who killed Neil Marshall, you ask? It was Emma Sky, wasn't it? I'm afraid that's not possible. You see, this piece of cloth contains a critical contradiction. What? A contradiction? What is this fool babbling about? I'm talking about a contradiction. One that proves who the real killer is. Mm, that's right. This piece of cloth. What could it possibly contradict? Chief Gant, your tyrical reign ends here. Behold, the piece of evidence that contradicts this cloth. Uh, I can't save. I... Oh, golly, Kazuma. Oh, wait. I wonder... I wonder... Yes! It's bloody! It's... It's bloody! Oh, my God. And what exactly is this supposed to be? This is the picture Miss Sky took. Take a good look at it. See where the piece of his vest was cut out? Yes. His shirt is showing underneath. It's hard to make out with all the blood on his vest, though. Exactly my point. His chest is soaked with blood. That's only natural. His lungs no doubt were punctured. Blood poured out over his mouth. Poured out of his mouth. Oh, but that piece of cloth. Wait. There's no blood on it. Ah! And some of Sky's fingerprints are on this cloth. There's no doubt that she shoved the prosecutor aside. However, Mr. Marshall was not impaled on the sword at that time. No, th this is nonsense! Now then, Chief Gant, let me ask you something. Prosecutor Marshall was not impaled when he, shoved his when he was shoved aside. He most likely hit his head on the ground and was knocked out. If so, then tell me, who could it have been? Who could have arrived at the scene before Ms. Lana Sky picked up the unconscious prosecutor and impaled him on the armor sword? <laughs> Then, to make it look like Emma was responsible for the prosecutor's death, said person proceeded to write her name on the jar with the victim's blood. A jar that they then broke on purpose to leave behind a clue. And make Lana believe her sister did it. Remember what you admitted only moments ago. That you personally cut out this bloodless piece of the victim's vest. Ironic, isn't it? Through the very act of creating insurance, you proved that you were the actual murderer. <laughs> oh, that one was the most difficult. Oh, golly.
Ahem. It's finally all over. Objection! Oh golly, he's oh. <laughs> that was close, Raito. You almost had me. Huh? Sorry, but you'll have to do better than that. I refute your allegations. What do you mean you refute his allegations? You see, that piece of cloth is illegal evidence. Oh my god, my nose is going numb. Order, order! What nonsense is this? Illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a suspect. Remember, Aji! Earlier, old writer here concealed that piece of cloth. Hi, Astro! Get his ass, get his ass! <laughs> so then, what's your excuse, Raito? You do have some conclusive evidence, don't you? Get his ass, get his ass, get his ass, get his ass! I'm getting his ass! Trust me, I'm getting it! Your Honor, I don't have any evidence I can present at this point in time. Fuck yeah! Well, that's true. The defense did refuse to present evidence. At this moment, then that piece of cloth ceased to be legal evidence. But that's not fair. <laughs> did you actually think you could be best me in court? It looks like the last laugh's on you, son. Oh my god, I'm getting lightheaded with how... how... oh my god. <laughs> I'm afraid Mr. Gant's claim is legally correct. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Wait, it's illegal evidence. I have to- one second. Uh, let- let- let me pursue my, uh, my evidence law. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the book. Oh, you little silly- silly goose. You little- you little silly little man. You little doofenshmirtz. You're a silly hacker. You're such a little- little heckin' dude. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, true, illegal evidence cannot be used to convict a person. Assuming, of course, that the evidence is indeed illegal. Evidence law time. However, this doesn't apply to all of the rest of the game. Exactly. <laughs> hmm? Well, Mr. Wright? Evidence law, my ass. <laughs> it seems, at last. The time for me to reveal my plan has finally arrived. Mr. Wright, do you admit to it? That you purposefully and illegally contain this piece of evidence. A uh, piece of cloth. I did not. I admit I refused to present it at one point. Oh, so the evidence is illegal. No, it isn't, Mr. Gant. Huh? It's not that I didn't present evidence then. It's that I couldn't. What do you mean you couldn't? There are certain procedures involved when presenting evidence. In this case specifically. No, Archie, don't listen to his lies. He is nothing but a coward. You can't really believe. I enjoy Gant's sprite so much. He's, it's so funny. He's so sweaty. <laughs> I love his sprites so much. They're fantastic. There's only one issue left to be resolved in this trial. Is this evidence legal or not? Very well. Let us settle this once and for all. Earlier, you refused to present evidence. If you can prove your conduct was not in violation of the law, then do so now. Bada oh heck. <laughs> Bada -ba -ba -ba. This is my proof, Your Honor. Evidence law. For this case. Oh, what's this? I've done my homework too, Chief, for this case, specifically. Indeed, Hemma Sky's fingerprints were on this piece of cloth. From the beginning, I was like, why the fuck are they mentioning this evidence law shit? Like, this has not been a single thing in any other case. This has to be important to this case specifically. <laughs> However, at that point in time, this was merely a piece of cloth, nothing more. Oh, what? You see, it's written right here in this book. The second rule of evidence law. Oh. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Anyway, welcome in, Astro. You came in at a, a shocking time with, with, my, with my, my little boy Chief Gan. <laughs> I hope you're having a wonderful day. I sort of... <laughs> didn't say hi properly. I found this piece of evidence myself, and said you're safe. It goes without saying, I did not have approval from the police department. I was bored and I didn't want to do homework, so... Ah. Uh, I remember homework was the worst part of school when I went, like, oh my goodness. I came in to be annoying. And your presence is greatly appreciated as an Ace Attorney S expert. <laughs> 
Rule 2, unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. The last essay too, I'm just tired. That's, yeah, that's fair. Homework is annoying. And here's the crux of the matter. You see, at the time it was impossible for me to, impro to, to prove the relevance between the cloth and the SL9 incident. What? What kind of nonsense is this? You want relevancy? Just take one look at this foot picture and... Sorry, but can you recall when was that picture presented? That was shown only a few moments ago. No! He's right. At the beginning of today's trial, that piece of cloth was still meaningless. The person who gave it value as evidence was you, Damon Gant. Ugh! You yourself confess to a certain truth. Let me verify this once more. On the day of the crime, you personally cut out this piece of the victim's vest. Oh yes! Oh, he's certain. No! It was then that you approved this cloth as conclusive evidence. Yes, you, the chief of police, personally approved this cloth. The only person who could have cut this from the victim's vest. <laughs> Rip him again. Is the one who stood before Prosecutor Marshall in his final moments. In other words, the real murderer. And there's only one person who that could be. Damon Gant, the killer was you. <laughs> Knew I should have gotten rid of him. Oh my god. Oh, I need a light on. Oh golly, oh golly gee Kazuma. Oh, now my entire like head is numb. And my hand, my right hand, and my the back of my head and my nose is all numb now from that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> oh I don't know. <laughs> Like, I knew that there was a sprite of him clapping his hands very fast, so I was expecting that coming from a while away. I thought that the, um, the thing where he's like, no, I thought that that was his breakdown. But I did know about the clapping, so I assumed after the breakdown was shown a couple times, or what I thought was the breakdown, I thought the clapping was going to be the breakdown, so I was getting so ready. But I did not know he was going to go on that long. Oh my god. Oh, that fucked me up so bad. Like, my entire, now my left hand is going numb as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just from like lack of breath. Oh, uh, yeah, clapping gym <laughs> reminds me of Redacted DJS. Exactly! I love the parallels between these two. It's fantastic. I knew I should have gotten rid of him. <gasps> Jake! That good for nothing scum! For two years he's been snooping around the department, trying to get something on me. Fucking king, pop off Jake Marshall. Crimes are being committed every day, yet he insisted on hounding me. Texans be like... Well, your crime wasn't exactly petty. He wanted to reinvestigate the case. He recruited Angel Star, then convinced Bruce Goodman. Detective Goodman. Yeah, that's right. Hound? Hound of the Baskervilles? Oh, Marshall! If the evidence is transferred, I'll lose my only chance to find out the truth. Please, you gotta help me. Yeehaw, yippee Goodman turned him down, as he ought to. Still, Jake Marshall didn't know when to quit. He stole Goodman's ID card and tried to take the evidence. Goodman came to me that day. He wanted to file a lost item report. I went with him to the evidence room. Then all of a sudden he decided to speak out. What are you talking about, Goodman? What voice am I going to give him? We'll figure it out. Can you please reopen the investigation, Chief? We can't transfer the evidence out. There are too many questions left unanswered. He opened his evidence locker, and as he was taking the evidence out, he said, It's not too late. I'm going to hand all this over to Marshall. Well, to be honest, I was a bit taken aback by his words. I had a bad feeling when he came to see me. 
but I never thought he'd bring up SL9. That's when I saw it. That accursed knife. I couldn't just pull it out. Doing so would have only led to more blood, making it near impossible to hide your crime. Even so, the blood was just pouring out. I didn't know who might stumble in, so I hurried to wipe it up. I was worrying so much about the floor I didn't realize my fatal mistake. The bloody handprint. And Detective Gumtree's locker. I used to be known as the crime computer. But everyone has to start somewhere, I guess. I was too nervous. I had no business doing any of it. Then you put the body in my car. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of any other way to move the body. I broke your trunk, but what's the big deal? You make a lot more than us detectives ever will. Girl. Well, leaving the prosecution's car aside, how? How could you get Miss Sky involved in all of this? Well, she had as much to lose as I did if the truth came out. So, you took the evidence from Detective Goodman's locker. Edgeworth getting so much shit. Yeah. Just getting bullied in the middle of this confession. I felt bad for having to do it. I also didn't have t the time to pick and choose what to take. So, he left the jar fragments in the glove. Why is the glove on top of the crime scene thing? I don't get it. It fell out onto the floor. Yeah. It looks like I was better off being an investigator of crimes than a committer. Why is the why is the glove on top of the... Okay. They all did their best to get in my way. I've got to hand it to them. They do their jobs well. Much to my dismay. Fake evidence doesn't hold up very well upon close examination. You must have known that. Tell me, Worthy. Why do you stand in court? Me? You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me. We're the same. One day you'll understand. We're not so different, you and I, Spider-Man. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. Like, you should have thought about it before you did it, you dum-dum. Yeah. Idiot. <laughs> The parallels between this game and AI, too. <laughs> well, looks like it's time to say goodbye. Oh, Wadji. What? Looks like we'll have to cancel that lunch date. Looks like I won't be able to top you tonight. Sorry, old friend. I'm sorry, too, Damon Gant. I knew you as you used to be long ago. I know. Astro, you're missing some vital context. I think that that joke was... had had a reason. I'm not just saying that, I swear. <laughs> oh, God. I knew you was long ago... I... What the fuck am I saying? I... I knew you as you used to be long ago. There we go. <laughs> no. I knew you as you used to be long ago. You were once a fine investigator and an example to others on the force. I'm sorry to learn that you're no longer that person. Those days are gone now, Aji. Thanks for all the memories, though. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Now you have Raito here. And Worthy. With these two around, you can't go wrong. I ship Rightworth. In fact, I can hear them already. The melodious sounds of a new beginning. This was only the beginning of the new chapter! There are two things I want you to understand. Yes? <laughs> Naramitsu? Huh? <laughs> First, your sister never heard anyone. Second, Damon Gant betrayed you from the beginning. You see, Miss Sky? You no longer have any reason to keep silent. You're right. When this trial is over, I'll tell everything. All that I've done these past two years. From the time I had Gant help me forge evidence up until today. So... It seems all the questions raised in this trial have been answered. I'm sorry, Miss Sky. I couldn't get you out of all your trouble. My, my. What high standards you have. For a rookie. Huh? 
I can see why Mia thought so highly of you. Who knows, a few years from now, you just might make it to the top. Ah, she's smiling! I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. Miss Sky. And to you too, Miss Edgeworth. I'm not smiling anymore. Fuck you, Edgeworth. Ah! She swore at me! You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. Believe me, I know how much of an ordeal it's been for you. Oh, <laughs> Lanamia! <laughs> it, it was nothing. Liar. I was worried the pressure might break you. And yet, he rose above it all and guided Mr. Wright to victory. You've done well, Mr. Edgeworth. To stop it! I only did my job! In light of this case, it seems a good self-examining is in order for all of us. Ms. Skye. Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent of murder. However, although the Chief blackmailed you, the fact is you still acted as his accomplice. A trial will be scheduled for these crimes at a later date. Yes, I understand, Your Honor. Is there something amusing about all of this? Why are you smiling? It's been a long time, Your Honor. A long time since I felt free of these heavy chains. Ah, uh, I love this. Well, this trial has gone on for far too long already. Regarding the charge of murder, this court finds the defendant, Ms. Lana Sky, not guilty. Rise from the Ashes is so good. I love it. It's very long, but I absolutely love it. That is all. This court is adjourned. <coughs> District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Two. At long last, it's finally over. Uh, Emma? Why the long face? I'm sorry your sister didn't get completely off the hook, but at least she wasn't convicted for a murder she didn't commit. No, that's not it. Just now, after the trial ended. I can see why Mia Faye thought so highly of you. I owe you my thanks, Mr. Wright. And to you too, Mr. Redworth. Huh. You've suffered every bit as much as I have over these past few days. We don't need this flashback. We just got this scene. <laughs> Emma, why are you showing me this flashback? This cafe drives me nuts because of how it references AFR and Litter lit Games, because it was put in later, yeah. I noticed a few references. I don't think all of them, but I did notice a few a few good references. Just just a just a few little little funny little funny little 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 tidbits. Oh golly. And obviously like Meekins and uh Emma being there as well. Makes me lose my brain, it's so tasty. Tasty morsels. <laughs> you know, I did my best too. But Lana didn't say a single word to me. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, pals. Have you got any evidence for us, Gumshi? The trial's over, so I, I don't know if this I don't know if the repetition can work for the, for the third time, Gumshi. Oh, Yes, I am. I've seen. I'll come back later. I've seen happier people at funeral. Okay, well. Wait, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? Yeah, we're doing this on purpose, aren't you? Making a detective run all run all around while on duty. Just up and up, you call me here. I've seen happier people at funerals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this fucking bit. I one thing that I absolutely, absolutely love about this attorney is the repetition humor. In like every single game, there's such good repetition humor. I fucking love it. So good. Hey, lighten up, balls. I'm only kidding. Oh, are you here because of my sister again? Nope, not this time. I came today because of you, Bal. Me? That's right. I thought you'd like to see someone. Lana? Lana! Lana! Should you be doing this? She's still under arrest, you know. Well, I won't tell you if you won't. I won't tell if you won't. Emma, I owe you an apology. It's okay, sis. Don't worry about it. That day, two years ago. Aww. It was the first time in my life I ever panicked. It was all I could do to keep myself from screaming. All I could think about was keeping you- keeping you from getting wrapped up in that mess. 
It's silly if you said Lana like you would say banana. Lanana? <laughs> Sis. I asked Gan to help me cover up the truth. Lanana. I thought I was doing it for your sake. But now, I realize I was wrong. I changed after that day. Lana's saying a sudden dramatic thing as my brain's like, ha banana. <laughs> Lanana! I, I changed after that day, sorry. Uh, I'm just thinking about something funny in my head. Oh my god, someone has to make- that, that has to be a Lanana picture out there somewhere. Someone has to have edited that. There's no way that's not a real thing. I'm, if that is not a real thing, I will- I will make it. <laughs> I, 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 will, I will have to after this. There's no way that that's not a real thing. I changed after that day. I know, I know. <laughs> I had to. It was the only way I could make it through the past two years. I knew how much I was hurting you by distancing myself. But I couldn't bring myself to tell you what I did. I, I was scared. Scared that you'd look at me with those eyes of yours. I was scared of how you'd react if you knew. But sis, you're only doing it for me. No. Huh? I turned my back on you that day. In hiding what I believed to be the truth, I was deceiving you. Sis. I'm such a fool. It took me all this time to realize it. She's scared of being perceived. She's just like me for real. Oh my god, Lana Roletta block? <laughs> Emma, I'm so sorry. But sis, you don't have to apologize. I'm happy now. You're happy? Of course. You know, sis, I always knew that one day you'd come back. And now you have. Ah, uh, I love them. Oh, Emma. Emma! Aww. Oh, they're so cute. Oh my god. Oh, I love them. Aww. No one can change the past. The only thing we can do is strive to make up for our mistakes. Why must we make up for our mistakes, you ask? Because in so doing, we can find the way back to our rightful path. And it is from there that we can move on toward a brighter future. Aww, that's so cute, oh my god. God, I wish they were in future games as it Capcom menacingly. Yeah, like, bro, Lana, why why do we not get any more Lana? It would be so cool to have, like, a Apollo Justice where she's, like, just nice. She's just really cool, you know? I don't know where she'd be added, but it would be cool. You already have the sprites, you could just, you know... Do a little bit of different detailing for Apollo Justice and, you know, like, come on. Just add her in for, like, at least a little bit of a, a funny little, oh, look, there she is. Sisters for real, for real. <laughs> At least, that's what I felt, watching the two sisters make up. Aww. Mr. Wright, Mr. Gumshoe, Dick, might I say. Maple. Thank you both for all that you've done. I'm sure we'll meet again someday. We don't! It sucks! Lana, we'll never meet again! We- we'll meet again? Nope. That does not happen. That never happens. This is our last time. Goodbye, Lana, forever. We are never going to see you, even though I so want to. But bye. Goodbye. Forever. We're never going to see you again. See ya. Bye. Listen, at least you get Emma. Yeah, at least we get Emma, but... Still... Hey. Isn't that right? Shoot to kill me. Edgeworth! Stop hiding and come over here. It's me, Shutakumi! I'm not going to put you in any future games! Where was he hiding? I just came to say... Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Right, well... I'll be going now. Mr. Edgeworth, I hope you don't blame yourself for what happened. He's getting dragged out from the corner. Game Boy for real, for real. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. We were the ones who acted corruptly, not you. Get away for real, for real, for real, for real, yeah. It's too late for me. I'm going to die now. Huh? No matter what anyone may say, I realize today that 
I can't correct my mistakes. Mr. Edgeworth. Not only that, but I don't even trust myself anymore. Chief Gant was right. Oh lord, he's a... Uh, uh, Edgeworth, uh... Yeah, this is the last time that we see him. He's gonna die. You despise criminals. I can feel it. You and me, we're the same. Ugh! One day you'll understand. Oh, believe me, you will. You're just one man. <laughs> you need a bit more character development. <laughs> just a smidge. You'll see what it really takes to bring them down once you try to go it alone. I do despise criminals. I plan to dedicate my entire life to fighting them. But in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. It's scary, but I've known that to be true for quite some time now. Hey, I two flashbacks. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. But Edgeworth. Who knows? Given enough time, I might have tried to pull something like Chief Gant did. That thought terrifies me. That's why I can't continue on as a prosecutor. Edgeworth, don't you understand? Damon Gant and your mentor, Manfred von Karma. Ugh! Uh, von Karma! Uh, uh. We're both the best of the best when it came to fighting crime. But they both made the same mistake. You said, in order to fight crime on my own, I'd need a weapon. That may be true, but think back to, the, to today's trial. My non-binary parent, Manny Von Kami. Absolutely, I love Von Kama. <coughs> Such a silly hacker. He weren't alone. Ugh. He were working together with Mr. Wright. And because of that partnership, but b, -b, -b partner I share Bradworth as well. <laughs> You're able to present evidence that otherwise would have gone undiscovered. Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Uh oh, uh, yeah. What is this, a pop quiz? Come on, Mr. Wright, show him what Lana's talking about. Oh heck, wait, I wanna save. Oh golly. Ding, 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 ding. Evidence, huh? Something that neither Edgeworth or I would have been able to find on our own. Is it the... Rule of law, the picture. I'm assuming. The b, b picture That might mean something to you. But I don't see how it had anything to do with our partnership. You fucking idiot. You're a dumbass, a little bitch perhaps, a little fucking idiot. This is what saving is for. Evidence, huh? <laughs> uh, the blue badger. Oh, p -p -p partners! Oh my god, I get it! Oh my god, p -p -p partners! That's the picture I drew. Our counterattack began with this. You had one half of the evidence list, and I had the other. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. They're literally, they're, they're queer coding these characters so much. Like, there's no chance. They're literally, they're literally making the two becomes one argument. Like, oh my, that's so gay, exactly. Bro, that's so very gay. Apart, we wouldn't have been able to completely restore Emma's picture. That didn't just happen by chance, Mr. Atterra. Ugh. It's time for me to go. Mr. Edgeworth. If you'll excuse me, there are still some loose ends that need wrapping up. Take care, Chief Prosecutor. Edgeworth, what would you do now? What will you do now, not what? Well, whatever you do, just remember, I'm going to assume that you're dead if I don't see you in two days. And I will tell everyone that I meet that you're dead. You can let what happened to kill the prosecutor in you. Or you can let it help you grow. In the end, it's up to you. <laughs> bye bye, Edgeworth. Have a happy character development. I know. It seems I owe you my thanks too, right? But what I face now is my problem. Edgeworth, I'll be waiting for you in court. Farewell. I'd better be going too. Okay, but I'll be by to visit soon. It seems we both have a lot to learn and catching up to do. 
Here, this is a little something for you. Scientific investigation, Albert Hairbrain. It's the first book I ever bought. Study it well. Thanks, sis. I will. Ah, oh, that's so cute. I love them. And so, another case came to a close. As for the sisters, I have faith. Ah. Faith that their lives have only just begun. Except for Lana, we're never seeing her again. Uh, her life is now ended. Emma, though, her life has only just begun. And as for me, I think it's time I started on a new journey of my own. Fuck, it's lagging. Oh, shit. A journey to rediscover myself. Bye. Why is that so fucking funny? <laughs> just, Edge went just, whoa. Well, don't go tr tricking off yet, just yet. Oh. Huh? What is it, detective? Of course, the last one's Edgeworth. Yeah, of course. There's just a little matter to be resolved about the chief prosecutor. You see, she isn't supposed to be out of jail like this. But... I thought you said it was okay. Yeah, well, it may be okay with me, but the folks the prisoner are a different story. <laughs> like, whoa! <laughs> huh? Basically, I had to bribe a guard in order to sneak around for 30 minutes. Believe me, it wasn't cheap, either. Huh? Way to go, detective. I didn't know you had a wild side. Yeah, well, <laughs> you see, Mr. Wright here is the one who will be footing the bill. Huh? Huh? What, do you think I can afford you with my salary? You gotta be kidding me, Bell. Huh? 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 Thank you, Mr. Wright. You're the best. Is he gonna say it? Why is it? I suddenly feel like I want to scream. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't we all go pay, pay it off together? Yeah, that's a great idea. Come on, guys. Let's go. Objection. There it is. Objection. <laughs> Yo, a second credits? Yo, this is awesome. We're getting even more credits. Wait, are we gonna have to- Oh, heck. Oh, golly. Um, <clears throat> I arranged for a friend of mine in Europe to take care of Emma. I hope she'll be pleased to study under a top coroner. As for me, this affair has pretty much ended my days at the prosecutor's office. Still, I managed to find my way back to the field somehow. Then, I'll be able to investigate crimes together with Emma. I actually was joking about this the other day, not on the stream, I don't think, but like to myself, I was thinking, oh, what if there's another credit sequence with all the characters? There actually was, holy heck, I wasn't expecting Courtney side. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it's just like Ryanosuke, exactly. <laughs> Short credits, I imagine. Yikes, I thought it was I was a goner for a moment there. In the end, though, they overlooked my un unauthorized investigation of the chief's office. If we penalize you anymore, it'd be worse than firing you. Yep, that's what they said. It just goes to show, you can't shake me off that easily. Nuri, my beloved best character designer, absolutely. The character designs in Ace Attorney games are absolutely ingenious, I fucking love them. Ah, <laughs> oh, my bug. Ooh, golly. Hi, it's me, Hoji. My voice was something like this. My new mission is to guard the main entrance and take care of Billy. Billy, is that the cactus? Can you believe it? I've been demoted to a security guard. My partner is keeping an eye on the entrance for me today. Your pa pa partner I'll show them, though. Someday I'm going to make detective. Yes, sir. Then I can be just like that dick gumshoe. He looks up to gumshoe. That's so cute. <laughs> partner? Oh my goodness. I love Meekins. Such a heckin' little guy. I love him. Ugh, oh, my back. I've been sat up for five hours now. Oh, Who's this? The Blue Badger? Oh my god, it is! Oh, fucking hell. The Blue Badger has something to say. Why? Why win the Blue Badger? Stop it! Stop! Oh no, it died! No! The Blue Badger died! This is the saddest top 10 anime moment compilation! No! No! I'm so sad. Hi there. What is it? Can't you see I'm having me a showdown with a steak lunch partner? Miss Star managed to sneak this into me. She's seen one of the guards, it seems. Well, cowboy. 
Looks like he did it. He even gave Bambina back here a smile. Back here a smile. Can you make sure Billy and the gang get the water? Mikins is on it, Marshall. He got it for you. Oh my god! Oh my god! You're such a Texan. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh my god! I adore this case specifically, but this game as well. Looks like we won't be seeing each other for a while. As a farewell gift, I put a new meal on the menu. The right way lunch. The top layer tastes as bitter as defeat. Bitter as coffee, but the bottom layer is as sweet as victory. Kids seem to dig the turnabout theme. It's a hot seller around exam time. Just make sure not to eat it backwards. <clears throat> Brandon Gay? No way. No way. I'm so Bro, you're the, you're the perfect person for Ace Attorney. I'll never forget what that young defense lawyer said after the trial. Let's see, what was his name again? Mr. Left? Anyway, he said he's been doing a something or other for, uh, how many years? Well, anyway, I've got another trial to get to, so I'd better be... Uh-huh. Oh, no. I've got my gavel. Sorry, gotta go. <laughs> Bro, gay, 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 gay. Like, if your name is Brandon Gay, you have to be on the Ace Attorney team somewhere. Like, you just gotta be. This is the gayest game of all time. You gotta be. God, so true. Maya! Ah, nothing suits the soul like fresh country air. Still, sometimes I do miss hearing you and your objection. Still, I can't go back until I'm a full-fledged spirit medium. Mystic Maya, afternoon training's about to begin. Coming! Well, see you around, Nick. I'm gonna assume that was Pearl, I don't know. Also, that background is... I didn't actually realize, because it's been so long since I've seen, um... The Justice for All case that takes place in... Korean, but, um, that's the same as the Spirit of Justice one. I thought it was a different place for some reason, but that is the same background. Just it's 3D. Also, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Korean. I'm quite certain. But I'm gonna say Korean because, first off, most people pronounce it that way, and also because it's more simple to distinguish in, like... Because I'm doing Spirit of Justice eventually, I'll explain that later, because this... Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I don't know why I'm here. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I brought you your tea. Hmm? <clears throat> What's going on? Same background in Maid Nita, and there's a man in the back, I think. He's back, bro. Hi, bad boy. Oh, God. <laughs> but, um... Oh, heck. What was I gonna say again? Oh, golly. Right. In, um, Spirit of Justice, it's more difficult to distinguish Korean and Korean. So, I'm gonna pronounce it Korean. Thanks for coming to see me off. I can't believe I'm going to Europe. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Thank you so much for everything. I'm a little sad, but I'll be alright. Whenever I want to see Lana, all I have to do is open this book. Oh? What's in- wait, what's in the book? What's in- what's in the book? Why are we peeking through it as well? What's- I wanna- I wanna see it! I wanna see it! Oh, That's so cute! Oh my god! Oh, I love them! Oh, I love them! Oh, they're adorable! Oh, I love them. I can't believe you're going to see my favorite lesbian, Courtney Scythe. Can't believe it. I think I got an achievement, but I wasn't paying attention. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. But yeah, I, I will be pronouncing it Korean because it's easier to distinguish in Spirit of Justice, even though that's a very long way away, but it'll be more tricky if I, you know, if it's Korean and Korean. You know, it's going to be tricky to distinguish, so I'm going to pronounce it Korean. But that is, that is it for Phoenix Wright, the first game. I don't know when I'll start Justice for All. I don't think it'll be the 21st of June, but it might be if I decide that it'll be funny. <laughs> Which, now that I'm saying it, I kind of want to do it just to subvert expectations. But then that would make you think that I won't do it, but then I will. So, very, very, very long away, yeah. Very, very, very extremely... Oh, wait, I don't have my VTuber model on. One second. Here we go, looks wiggy.
yeah, um, it's gonna be so long until I do, like, Spirit of Justice, Apollo Justice, Investigations, Professor Lenton versus Phoenix Wright, I do want to do them someday, but definitely not in the near future, but sometime as soon as I, like, can. <clears throat> God, Professor Lenton versus Phoenix Wright, yeah, that one I feel like I could technically do, but on, on this laptop it just doesn't work, which sucks, I hate it, I'm pissed. <laughs> it just doesn't load on this laptop, which really sucks, so I'm just gonna have to wait until very, very, very long in the future. But yeah, anyway. So excited for this special episode, so you're gonna freak out. I can't wait. Uh, my throat right now. That was so much fun, I adore that kiss. It has now been five and a half hours. Actually, let me quickly- okay, go sleep. Alright, I will. Oh wait, Astro. One second. You need to see this. One second. How can I how can I show it off? Let me just Oh wait, me? Yeah, you absolutely have to see this. One second. I don't know if you know of this line, but it, it gave me a shock when I saw it. I screenshotted it, so I have it just here. Uh, I need- I need to think- uh, I need to hear your opinions on it. Let me just get it up real quick. I'm so intrigued. Yeah, one second. I'm almost got it up. So, Astra, what is your opinion on this? What's your opinion on this, Astro? What is your opinion on this line? I, I need to know. Because it was shocking, and the context doesn't make it much better, so... This is such a weird conversation. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Like, people who are vegans are like... Oh my god, my throat. I'm d I desperately need sleep. We humans don't drink their own milk. So I drink cow's milk. Like, what made it so... A person's tattooed... Yeah, it is... It's very, very interesting. Letting the can drink milk, yeah. Very, very interesting. <laughs> How did a person realise? You can fucking... <laughs> oh my god. It's very, very interesting. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, that's gonna be it for tonight. Um, God, my throat is fucked up. Doing Gant's voice and especially as several breakdowns, holy shit. I thought, because there's only one character with the deep voice, I almost said deep throat, deep voice. That would be easy, but oh my goodness. Glad you were pondering that theoretical question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. It just, like, genuinely shocked me when I saw it. There's been so many good moments in this one stream. I love it. Anyway, that's gonna be it for today. I hope everyone has a wonderful time, and I will see you all later. Goodbye!